the job. Kind of oh, like looks good. <laughs> looks good. Looks good from here. <laughs> Josh Trelecki, you beautiful, beautiful, bald-headed brother. How you doing, man? I'm doing wonderful. <laughs> I'm doing wonderful. Uh, How about you? Uh, uh, let me tell you something. Every every night um, when I prepare for a podcast, I have, I don't know, something like 50 Christian news sites I go to. I always visit Christianity Today. Yeah. I'm always disappointed that there isn't a new <laughs> article trashing Josh Trelecki <laughs> and his dispensational point of view. <laughs> yeah. You got the good old days. <laughs> <laughs> how's, uh, how's the, how are you? How's the family? How are the kids? How's, how's everybody doing? Uh, we are, we're all doing well. Um, you know, we had some uh, little sickness run through the house, but nothing uh, unusual for this time of the year for us. And uh, we've been really busy. We had a conference a couple weeks ago, and then uh, we had a, a couple in our uh, church get married. And so yes. it's always kind of week long things, week week long in preparation yep. for the conference, and then week long for the wedding. And so we've had like three weeks just kind of busy, busy, busy. But now um, we're getting back into the routine of things. So we're we're thankful for all of it now did i am i am my eyes deceiving me or are you are you growing a little bit of chin fuzz is there some chin yeah. fuzz going on there and uh, yeah I, I, i'm trying to get it going you know <laughs> I've, I've heard it helps with uh covering up the double chin <laughs> <laughs> no you don't <laughs> well yeah no when i, when I worked at ups I, I couldn't have any any facial hair um <laughs> i just shave every day so now that i'm not there anymore now that I'm, you've I'm lost someone go. now that you've lost some on top you're like well i gotta have some hair somewhere let me just start yeah. with the chin you know? <laughs> yeah i wish i i wish i grew up on top but it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> uh well how was the uh let me well how was the conference now um the well actually i should say before we talk about the conference you and i have a little a small announcement yeah not, not a big announcement but we got a bit of a small announcement i think it's big no i think it's pretty small I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna be uh contributing articles to josh Strelecki's supply of grace website yes yes supply I'm, of so, grace. I'm so com. excited <laughs> you know, I, you I've must, been you must to, like controversy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been meaning to ask you for a long time, and just with everything, I've you know, I haven't been able to contribute as much. But yeah, it was an idea. <clears throat> you know, I look at some of these other ministries that uh, I was kind of associated with, and I'll, I'll look at them these days to kind of get ideas. Um, but one of them was basically a, a website that's blog and, and there's all these authors that contribute to it. And I was like, man, we should have something like yeah. that in, in the grace message. And, and, uh, and so that's why I started it first started with me. And, and then I started reaching out to some guys and, uh, you know, I, I don't want to put pressure on anyone um, as far as contributing, and and I know a lot of guys. You know, they don't necessarily write, and they got their main ministries and and all that. And so it's kind of a low key uh, contribute when you can. Um, obviously, the more you can, that's awesome. But if not, that's fine too. Um, so yeah, supplyofgrace.com, and and I'm thankful that you'll be contributing, and I yeah. see that you got some scheduled already. You, so you, I, yeah, yeah, I was lining them up yesterday. <laughs> I was just taking yeah, over like Tuesday. It days the uh that's a legitimately gorgeous website i mean you really you did a phenomenal job putting this thing together and uh wordpress it looks beautiful you really uh you've got quite the t the website building uh talent there man i i was just blown uh blown away by how it looked and then well, um, go ahead it was it's pretty well, I shouldn't say simple. Simple to me, I guess. Um, you know, they they did a lot of it, and so it's just kind of you know making sure putting it all together. But I just wanted to keep it simple, have the emphasis on the articles and what you guys are going to be bringing to it. And um, what's what's been amazing is you know you kind of have youtube and facebook and you have those areas in which of people that you can influence which is a ton of people but there's like a whole different audience of like the blogosphere um you know that we're that we're reaching and um you know a small reach right now we're, we're reaching we're getting about 200 to 300 views 
per week. Um, it's kind of where we're at, kind of in the middle right there. And uh, but it's 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 wonderful. And I hope it grows more with contributors, and uh, hopefully more people can go to it. You know, I'd love to for there to be a new article by a different person you know kind of each week day. each day of the week yeah, yeah that'd be awesome that, that'd be the goal yeah, but eight, um we're just many, taking it slow didn't you say you have like what eight or nine guys already contributing or yeah so i got eight you're nine you're the ninth um and uh you know some of them haven't been able to contribute yet you know kind of getting in the, the routine of it um some other guys you know are, are consistent and and that's just that's fine I, you know i don't i don't have any real prerogative for it and don't want to put pressure on any of the guys and and you know uh, any gals too you know any uh ladies that would like to write about the grace message you know i'm not um you know it's i'm open to anyone and so there's a way on supply of grace that they can fill out a form and say that they would like to contribute and i'd love to get in touch with anyone so uh, you can give uh, give your email address get the article sent a newsletter which you can't yep. you can't go wrong with that and um i uh um now some of these other guys i'm not sure i ever met them that you have there's uh rod jones i haven't uh who are some of these other contributors the the there's rod jones and then who was uh joshua edwards i don't i, I know marshall marshall coleman the man yep. the myth i know him and um uh, and then and then there's david winston bush i don't yeah, know if so, i met those guys yeah so rod jones he's a. Uh uh, he's a teacher down in, I think, the Detroit area of Michigan. And uh, Rod and I have, you know, we have a, um, a relationship kind of started with email correspondence here and there. Uh, we do kind of a, a Zoom call every once in a while and uh, talk about doctrine and things like that and what's going on. And Oh, it's um, awesome. You, so, got, you yeah. got a grace preacher out there in, in Detroit, even South Detroit. That's phenomenal. Yeah. That's really yeah. awesome. That's great. Yeah, so That's he has a, he has a, uh, he kind of does some uh, lessons on Facebook and things like that. And he's got a group I think he meets with virtually. Yeah. Um, and then Joshua Edwards, he, if, if you listen to some of the conference messages, um, I think you'll be really blessed with his teaching. Um, he, he's a tremendous uh, writer um, and he, he preaches like he writes as well. Yeah. And so yeah. um he's down in uh, a Grace Church down in Georgia. Mm. And um he's a, a kind of like an assistant associate pastor down there with a, another guy named uh Lewis Edwards. Oh, I like him. And, I like um, I like Josh Edwards already. I like him yeah. already. I'm, I can totally associate with him. A writer that's an associate pastor. I could yeah, I that's yeah. His, <laughs> I know exactly what he's what <laughs> I, I know him already. Yeah, yeah. Um, I it, I may have seen him. I think he may have. Uh, did he speak up in uh, at your conference or? Yep. yep. Yeah. You saw him on the panel. There you he's go. The southern I'm Southern like, draw. I, yeah, yeah. I know. I I was like, I know. I I figured. I yeah. I said, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's good. That guy is real good. I like him. Yeah. So uh, that, yeah, and then we and then we got other guys. Um, uh, Richard Church, I think you're going to be having him soon. Yeah, um, he's going to. Richard Church is is on the list. Uh, a guy by uh, a name Larry Gabbard. I don't know if you ever heard of Larry. Um, Larry is kind of like a. I've never met Sam. Gerhardt before, yep. um, but kind of the cowboy. Uh, Larry's, <laughs> Larry's got that that sense to him. But I think just I a, think I've seen Larry speak. I think I've. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. I think I might know who you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Larry, a very golly man, great teacher. Uh, so he's been uh, contributing when he can as well. Um, I got Charlie McQuillan on the list too, but he, you know he's again <laughs> a lot of these guys are very busy. So. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, just just when he can, and then Charlie, then Charlie McQuillan. No, no, no. Charlie McQuillan's not busy. Charlie McQuillan is scared. He's scared. <laughs> <laughs> He's well, too- <laughs> hopefully that will motivate him a little bit. So, yeah, you know, so I'm just in, I'm just lighting his fire. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> I love you know, Charlie. Sorry. I love him to death. I really do. And uh, Rochelle, every once in a while, we see her in the live chat. Uh, what a, what a wonderful woman she is. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, great. I can family. understand why I, you I guys are good family. friends with them. They they seem like really sweet people yeah um, yeah the, they're great. Uh, now the and i don't mean to embarrass you but the uh I, I was looking at um the articles yesterday and you had one that you posted the other day on the mind of christ which yeah. I, which i loved and you had uh you quoted you actually quoted 
1 Corinthians, you'd think he'd go Philippians, but no, no, no. He's, he went to 1 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16. You know, but yeah. the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are yeah. foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And Josh has a paragraph here. I have to admit I loved he said, uh, Paul, by inspiration of the Spirit, would by comparison enlighten them, the Corinthians, to the depth of the eternal, to the freedom of heavenly wisdom, and to the riches of the spiritual. <laughs> I love it. And then he, and then he says, uh, God would have the Corinthians know that which he prepared, that which he ordained before the world unto glory, those deep things, those things freely given. Therefore, they would not need to work for them, for God made them. They would not need to think them up, for they're granted by his divine authority. They would not have them in measure, but to be enjoyed in their wealth. Also, they would not need to pay for them, for they were bought by the blood of our Savior. <laughs> I Dude, have, uh, that's awesome what happened to you you were just absolutely inspired <laughs> by the spirit <laughs> i uh i've been studying for um a couple months now the the issue of the the mind of christ the mind of lord the times where it's used and and uh digging into ephesians 1 and colossians 1 and, and in my mind has been been blown um you know things that you know looking at that eternal counsel and understanding that more by the way um just to give a plug into our conference that we had brandon smith and joshua edwards yeah. all the teachers are great but in regards to that eternal counsel um, they had two messages, uh, a day in thy courts was Brandon's and, and Marshall, uh, uh, Josh was, uh, the mystery of his will that were just, uh, phenomenal. Um, but that's, that's a, been an issue I've been studying lately and it's just so, uh, just so mind blowing to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, I want to get to your conference. Absolutely. I, I have lot, I have lots to say about that conference, but the, uh, you had, I mean, you did a long series you, uh, on the um, on the wisdom of God. You were talking a lot about the uh, the things, for, the deep things of God. I remember I had for weeks been posting. Oh, he's got another one. He's got another one on the foolishness of God. Another one on the deep things of God. You know, I felt like I, you know, and and what was it that inspired you to do those to study those particular topics and in such great detail like you did. Well, that's a great question. I don't know if anyone's ever asked me that. Uh, that's a that's a <laughs> great welcome. great question. Um, everything that's been going on in our in our country and in the world, if I were honest, um, you know, obviously you don't you don't want to take those things and put them into the text. Mm -hmm. But when you're when you're studying the context of these things, and then you start seeing its implication yep. and its application, and and how it works in our day and what we're going through and there was just such a a parallel and i was just thinking man our is the church at large getting sucked up into the wisdom of the world and not so much you know sometimes it's easy to identify the kind of the evil of the world but what i call the the or as as isaiah says the the goodliness of the flesh the the goodness of the wisdom of the world that right. is that is temporary that has this uh enticement for temporary gain um is what i've seen and none of that compares to what we've been given regarding the wisdom of god right. in a mystery and so uh, in one sense, I've been seeing a lot of Corinthianism in the church in regards to those things. And, you know, as a as a pastor and teacher, you know, especially for our church, you know, I just want to make sure that we are able to discern those things and pursue what we're to be pursuing. That's the, that's the wisdom of God. Right. See, I, I kind of I asked that question because I kind of wondered if those topics were not just basically a reaction to everything that's going on right now. 
you know, and I because I feel like you you are subconsciously saying forget what the world's telling you, forget, yeah. forget everything, forget everything, pursue God, pursue His wisdom, you know, yeah. uh, pursue His foolishness, you know, yep. the yep. Uh, the preaching of the of the cross, pursue Him, pursue God, yep. keep your keep your head focused on things above, and it just feels like you're just kept your your. Uh, and all everything seems to be getting worse every day. You're standing there pointing the way upward, and your your fingers up pointing to the sky, saying, "Keep your mind on Christ. Keep Amen. focused on grace." You know that kind of thing. That's that's my intent. Yeah. Simply yeah. put, that's my intent. Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, I had wondered if um, you know, and I, I I've often wondered if if a lot of these messages you're feeling the same way that a lot of the the pastors are you just feel like you need to be i mean you you we so many things are happening you feel like you really do have uh an obligation to give people purpose to get them focused give them guidance on 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 spiritual matters keeping them keeping them properly minded on spiritual things and not lose track and lose sight of of spiritual things in their lives because they they can't afford to lose that you know um, yeah, and and we have all the purpose in the world. We have the, we have all the thoughts to think about in the world. You know what we've been given from God. Right. I was uh, in my study. I was looking back at Romans eleven. I believe it's verse thirty three. There, when he ends that chapter, and just this expression for of him and through him and to him are all things. Right. And you know, sometimes you look at that and you're just like, oh yeah, God's so great. You know, you kind of yeah. just look at that. But when you look at the issue of of of, of him. Everything originates, everything begins, everything is planned, prepared by God. It's through him, everything's provided for. He's he's going to bring it to pass. Everything is supplied, all the sufficiency that you need to right. participate in what he uh, has originated, what he's purposed and planned for, he's going to provide you. And then to him, everything is to his glory. Everything is to, to his end, to his objective, to his goal. And, you know, you just look at that and you just... <clears throat> realize man this is this is not about us at all it's about his plan his eternal purpose in christ we just get to be a part of it and when we realize that we start to to realize maybe or hopefully what we ought to be doing then laboring with him and not laboring to do our own thing and i love that and uh that's not to go off to the to the deep end to say you know quit your job get divorced you know that's kind of how the corinthians took it um but rather to take his word and apply it in the details of your life where you're at what job you have you know right. what country you live in right and and let and let and shine as a light holding forth the word of life yes i love that now you um all right so what, okay now i'll go back to the conference and then i want to talk about the last couple of messages uh that you did well the yeah. ones that are on youtube um, yeah. Now, the the conference that you had did you uh, did you have a good turnout? How did it? How was it? How did it go uh, for you guys? Yeah, it was it was great. Uh, you know, every conference I I enjoy, um, and so in one sense, all of them are good. But in another sense, they're they're kind of a life of their own, and each one seems to get better and better. And I think that's <laughs> a couple a couple reasons. I think um, each one we've we've grown in the sense of more people coming, and um, and I don't mean that just you know looking at numbers, but when you have more people, that that th- it enlarges, you know, it gets bigger, yeah, and um, yeah, and that kind of thing. And so uh, we had a great turnout. We had the most people. You know, we do we try to do a soft res- registration to figure out food and all that kind of stuff. And so we had the most people ever register from it um we had people come in new faces uh you know uh, some old faces that that have been there year after year and so yeah we had a pretty good turnout we were probably uh you know for us it was about 100 maybe a little bit over 100 yeah great um so that's that's uh that's amazing for us and yeah, yeah. we just had a great a great time and and then one thing that we did you know just as far as the teachers go we brought them in a day early uh they were all able to do it and uh, they got in thursday um 
and uh, we had a meal together, uh, the pastors and the family. Uh, uh, you know, families. Awesome. Yeah, and we got to we got to discuss life and ministry and the conference <laughs> and our messages. And, oh and man! Then, and then Friday we had all day together, kind of as well. Um, and so there was just some wonderful fellowship beforehand because sometimes it goes by so fast. You oh, don't yeah. Get that, so. Oh, yeah. I imagine the fellowship would be sweet with all those guys. I, I love all of them. Uh, and I have been, um, and I've, it's, uh, it's like, it's, uh, there's, you had the one that was on your, uh, in the conference. What was his name? Brandon Smith, I think, from Tom Bruce's yeah. church. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. like he, it's like he just suddenly popped up on, on Bruce's channel and, uh, and he's great. I like him. I like him oh, a lot. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, he he uh, he's been there, I guess, for five years, and I think he's been teaching for. I think he said maybe two. I might I might get that wrong, but uh, yeah, Brandon's a great guy. His his wife Amanda is great. He's got uh, four children. Oh. Know, just a beautiful family. Oh. The guy is the guy is extremely busy. I mean, he's a he's a CFO of some some company, um, and you know he's he's doing that which is crazy hours. And then he's, he's teaching at church, you know, and, uh, just got a, a real passion for the word of God and teaching it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I yeah. commend his ministry to yeah. anyone. Who's yeah. I mean, it's yeah. Uh, tough to be in the shadow of Tom Bruset in his right, church, right. but he, he can hold his own pretty well. I think he yeah. does a, he does a real good job. Now just be honest with me, Josh, w- were, were any of the, uh, pastors, uh, drama Queens behind the scenes? Were they what? <laughs> Any of them drama queens behind the scenes? No, no, not at all. You know, yeah. we had Thursday Thursday night after our meal, we went, we were at the hotel and we went off to a side room and we were just talking about stuff and, um, you know, life and ministry. And it yeah. was just, it was just great. That I mean, sounds hours. phenomenal. Yeah. That sounds really phenomenal. Um, yeah. Is that the uh, first time, have, is that the first time you had Ricky Jr. at your church or has he been there before? Oh, first time. Um, you know, I met when I first got on the Grace Message. When I went down to the Summer Family Conference there in uh, Illinois, and and uh, I had met him. I don't know if he remembered it, but I we. I think that might have done it. I think I got it here. Oh, we lost quite a few people. That's all right. Um, that should do it. technology i think it's just it must be following me or something i think uh yeah <laughs> um all right everybody says we're back yeah it's great until until it's great until it breaks down on you yeah you know, right because i don't i do the same thing every day i don't change anything up you know yeah but it yep. always breaks you know it'll change up on me um the uh and i also think it's demon possessed do you think it's uh do you believe in demon possession josh in the age of grace. Uh, when it comes to technology, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to skip the Gog and Magog. I got my. I, I got that out of my system. Now let me. Um, now let me ask you, uh, and then we'll get into the live chat. I know uh, there's some. Uh, no problem. All right. How about this? We'll get in the live chat, and then I'll and I'll get back to other questions. I want to talk about this. Uh, this message you did on the on the good works, you did the last six verses of Titus three. I legit love that message. I, I I thought you did such a great job with that. Um, let me um, well, let me get into the live chat here. I got I, and I got to highlight. There's a lot of funny comments and stuff too. Um, all right. Well, I'm. I know I'm missing some comments here uh, already. The. Um, so sorry. I remember Dan said, "Where where were you last week?" Uh, I remember reading that. Yeah, that was uh, more technology issues. Our um, Facebook changed something as, as far as going live. Um, how it in how it interfaced with our software that we use VMix, um, and so. It said we were streaming, but then we looked back and the videos weren't up, so uh, we got to work out those kinks for Thursday night. Oh, I must have been buffering for a while. Can, We've only yeah, got. You can find them on Facebook, though. Facebook, uh, yeah. if you just search Twin Cities Grace Fellowship on Facebook, you can find the messages. Um, let's see here. Um, the. Um, 
Bob Picard's in the house, you beautiful man. How you doing? Great to see you. Um, uh, Dan the man is here. Um, I know Karen Gray is around here somewhere. I, I missed the earlier comments. Somebody had posted some verses out of, what was it, Ephesians 4? Um, yeah, I don't see those on here um, either. Uh, Justin says, Brandon's a wonderful Bible teacher. Precious saint. Yes, that's how I think of Brandon. <laughs> Precious. <laughs> no, I'm totally kidding. Uh, I'll bet that guy uh, would be, uh, I, you know, I imagine, uh, I get the impression he knows his Bible backwards and forwards. Uh, so, um, very detail-oriented, uh, which I love. And as, I, as, I, as is true with you, um, that message you did on uh, Titus 3, the last six verses of Titus 3. Yeah. You know, I love how, I mean, you... Which is which is a difficult topic that you uh, to cover. You know, here you've got to go into which is probably a pastor's least favorite topic, which is dealing with uh, heretics, having to do the all the first and second admonitions. You know, yeah. and dealing with the whole rebuke and all of this stuff uh, going on with the foolish questions and everything else. And yeah. um, I loved the way you handled it. You. You clearly spent time uh, diving into, you know, the, 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 the meaning of the words, the sense in which these words are to be taken, you know, yeah. given a sense of those passages. Um, and, and not only that, you kept it in a, you kept comparing Scripture with Scripture in order to get the big picture of yeah. everything that's said when it comes to dealing with heretics, who could be a heretic, and, you know, all of the different passages about how to handle reproof and rebuke, which is not biting somebody's head off, you know? Yeah. You also have to consider the spirit of meekness, considering yeah. thyself, lest thou also be tempted, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I loved how you handled it. I loved how, um, you know, you talked in the beginning about identification that made me emotional, because that's my favorite <laughs> topic. And then I loved... You know, like you had the you know you you started with the context, and then I loved how you explained the faithful saying. You know that that yeah. it's that it's doctrine concisely said, doctrine packaged together in a fa in a saying. You know, it's not yeah. faithful. Something God is doing, you can count on it. It's always true. Mm -hmm. I loved how you did that. Um, I loved I loved how you took the time to explain what that is, and I loved how you explained it because I, I, I'm not, I'm not heard an an explanation of that as well as that. I mean, that just feels to me like you really nailed it. And then you and then you had this wonderfully substantive period where you were talking about rebuke and all the different things the Bible says about how to do it, which was um, just legit, meaty, substantive, and just edifying. You know. Um, I, you did a really great job there. I hope I'm embarrassing you, but I, it, re it really was great. Well, I appreciate the feedback. You know, I, I, I welcome any feedback, whether it's good or, you know, <laughs> corrective. So, yeah, uh, it doesn't doesn't embarrass me. It helps me. Um, and so I, uh, you know, I was, I was going through that, like you, like you expressed, you know, it can be a difficult passage. What I find interesting with a lot of these passages, especially in the pastoral epistles, is Paul gives a very clear and concise description of these, of these men, um, of these heretics. Uh, so for instance, in verse 11, knowing that he that is such is subverted right. and sinneth being condemned of himself. And you look at that and the tendency is to be like, yeah, like to chew his head off, right. you know? Right. And, uh, and yet you have so many other passages that talk about, like you said, meekness and gentle in when you, you know, admonish them. Right. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't be strong in your, right. your tone, but uh, it's not a, a hateful spirit. You right. know, it's a want them to be recovered kind right. of thing. But, right. Um, and yeah, you, you made the point what I have that to do is balance it out with with other passages. Otherwise, sometimes I can find myself wrongly applying, you know, what is being said. Oh, I just I loved how I mean, you could, you made the point too. a heretic can be a believer or non-believer. Yeah. Uh, and and a person who is tripping up another brother who is causing problems in the assembly could be somebody who knows all the sound doctrines of grace. And they're yeah. just willfully choosing to. Um, give into the flesh and misbehave to such a degree that 
uh, there would require some admonishment on the part of the spiritual leadership of the church. Yeah. Um, I, uh, yeah, I got that one from Romans 14, the stronger right. and weaker brother. That, that passage just blows my mind because oftentimes we use it to talk about right division. You know, the, 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 what we can eat now or in view of what they couldn't eat. But there's, there's much more to Romans 14 than just that. It's, it's the issue of how the stronger and weaker brother are relating. Right. And that the stronger br- brother, with the right knowledge that they have, right. that they're not using it in a stumbling, sinning right. way to their brother. And you're like, right. oh, knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifies right. that kind of right. issue. Yeah. And to me, that's what Paul's bringing out partly right. in Romans 16 when he says, the ones that walk contrary to the doctrine which you've learned, mark and avoid them. And I'm like, like, oh, that could actually be the stronger brother, right? Right. Uh, in that it's context. the it's the it, it's the stronger brother that's right, and yet yes. he's the one who's being criticized here, not because of his position on that issue, because he's totally right, but it's about him called being a stumbling block to somebody who does not fully understand, who is who is, you know, who still needs to come exactly. into the knowledge of the truth a bit. You know, he's he's yep. causing the other brother to be so offended, you might actually lose him. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. That's 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 amazing. That's amazing. So even you know knowing the doctrines of grace isn't enough. You've got to yep. you've got to walk the walk. You've got to legitimately exercise you know constraints with the liberty that you have in consideration of others, particularly the weaker brethren. And you've got to be conscious of your own behavior in a, in a local assembly because just knowing the doctrine isn't isn't good enough. You've got to walk the walk. And you've got to behave in such a way that it would be loving and edifying for the rest of the believers in the assembly. And it's a really difficult thing, I'd say, for any pastor and any you know uh, spiritual leadership to have to deal with, you know, issues of uh, you know that would need to be addressed with a believer who knows the doctrine, but yet needs to yep. mind his walk and mind his tongue and mind the manner in which he's treating others. You know. That's Preach hard. It. That's hard. Um, yep. And I just but I love the way, Yeah, but necessary. And I love the way yeah. you handled it because what's at stake here is losing that is losing that weaker yep. brother. Yep. You know, you you want to lose that weak. You've got to build him up in the faith, in love, yep. like yep. until and let him get established in the faith because you can't afford to just trip him up and uh, you know take somebody new and just get in their face of grace down their throats to a degree that yeah. you know they just run away with pulling their hair out you've got to treat them in love and be considerate and give them that breathing room and that time to grow and to take it all in because sometimes yeah. some people are so excited about somebody else learning grace doctrine they really want them to see it they want them to see the big picture but they're but but they're they're so over anxious and overzealous of getting that yeah getting that doctrine in them that they're just that they're scaring them off you know yeah just and i'm like just love the you have, you have visitors come into your church just love them they get enough yep. grace in those messages that they hear unless they have a question just love them just show them love that's what that's yeah. all you got to do you don't have to teach them anything in between me- uh, services yep. um I, well, I, I completely agree with you uh, on all that. You know, I think that for the most of us, it took us some time for us to understand grace and understand right division. Oh, yeah. Um, some, you know, you know, got it right away and, and those kind of things. And, and that's great. But, um, you know, we need to exercise patience and as far as yeah practically speaking when they come in yeah i completely agree i i've i've told our folks that you know we don't need to in between the breaks you know pull out the chart and you know hammer away <laughs> at the chart exactly um exactly. you know let them just get the food yeah, from the messages and and talk about what was taught in the messages you know and um the allow them to come to it allow them to they're they're there for a reason right and most of that for us for in any ways is you know they visit our website in advance and they see a teaching and you know i don't i don't take every session to to talk about the chart right you know we're in a passage and i'm dealing with the content so right allow the, the word of god to to work in them and and then come alongside them if they got questions and right i've seen it both ways you know kind of uh too much heavy on the chart you know and then i've seen it the other way where it really does work when you're just being patient with them and then addressing their questions when they got questions so 
and I think I think they just simply need good Bible teaching. They're like, oh, okay, that was great teaching, regardless of the, and they need to feel the love. They just yeah. legit need to feel the love from the people, and just and because they're going to walk away going, okay, the teaching was good, and the people, but the people were. I could I could see myself hanging out with these people. I could see them being my yeah. family, you know. Yeah. And and yeah. I don't think I don't think that the. We're overthinking it too much of them coming into church on their first Sunday going, oh, wow, this grace message, I get it, this is amazing, now right. I understand my Bible. They're not going to do that on the first, the first time they come to your church if they don't know right. grace and right division. Uh, they're just going to walk away going, okay, look, that's a good Bible teacher. He actually teaches from the Bible. I like how he teaches, and I like, I like the people. Let's go back. Let's see what else they got. I mean, that's all, that's all you can expect from a first a first day visit of a newbie. Now, maybe, you know, there might be something then in that message that uh, they hear where, uh, you know, it'll pique their interest and they'll want to. Okay, there's. I need to. I need to know more here because there's something I'm not getting. You know, I can. Right. I can see a lot of that, but um, you know, you just. I, I think feeling the love is as important as getting some sound doctrines of grace on for any newbie and on their first visit. Yeah. Um, and then just have a library or booklets and stuff available to them if they want to be able to read more about whatever it is they're not understanding. Um, I think that's that's worth it. But I think too often we we're so overzealous we just we just scare them off. Yeah. <laughs> and now yeah. I got want to ask you too. Um, the what what's your what's your method of preparation? So when you uh, when you had those verses in Titus uh, was it three ten to fifteen. What was your what was your preparation for all of that? What uh, what's your what's your approach to uh, an outline and putting a sermon together? Um, what, what's your what's your thinking there? How do you do it? Yeah, I, uh, boy, oh boy, great question. Yeah, <laughs> um, you got all I, day, man. Yeah, when I um, when I prepare, usually when I'm in a book, I'll usually do an outline of the whole book in advance or have you know an outline in my mind um so i've had already it kind of broken down not that that can't change you know but um so as far as an outline goes you know i'd already prepared i was gonna do verses and and sometimes uh, you know i might have a section or identify a section in the passage or you know in the chapter and i'll break it down even further because i'm like oh i'm not you know I need to take just a message alone to deal with these two verses or whatever that might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and so, uh, you know, I knew that verses 10 through 15 were going to be my last section. And um, I knew, you know, I call these primers. You know, I, I kind of get that from Keith Blades. Um, and I'm sure other people have used it as well. But that I'm not going into the detail of every single thing. Yep. And I knew I wasn't going to be dealing much with Artemis and Tychicus and Nicopolis and um, and so my focus was on ver essentially verses ten and eleven and then verse fourteen um, and I spent most of the time in verse ten and eleven but right. I look back to my notes from the previous lesson to refresh myself of kind of the line of thinking that I had the the context of everything um, and then once I refresh myself I you know I kind of dig into it. And I just read it, reread it, reread it, reread it, and start to see the things that, you know, are sticking out. And, and I find a, a passage here, of course, that in view of verses 8 and 9, he said, avoid foolish questions, genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, that they are unprofitable and vain. Right. And then he moves right into verse 10, and a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Right. Well, those, those things are connected. Right. And so I start seeing those things. And right. And then I'm like, well, this isn't the first passage in Titus where he's talked about addressing people that are opposed to the doctrine. And then I'm like, oh, first Timothy and second Timothy, when I just look at the pastoral epistles, all the all the things that the the leadership is to be aware of and are to be doing and to how to respond when these difficult situations come up and so i just <clears throat> read and reread first and second timothy and i started just taking notes of all these things that he's charging them to do yep. the opposition that's going to come the response there to have in view of the opposition yep. and kind of package that together in, in regards to verses 10 and 11 of titus so that was kind of my method as far as that message goes but Love. um you know i i, I break down sentences 
um, you know, I'll write down a passage and I do, uh, it's commonly called like sentence diagramming. Yeah. Um, just to see the, the, the thoughts in a sentence and, you know, defining words, just kind of making sure I know what's being said. Of course, look at the context and then, uh, <laughs> I, I just try to meditate upon it to be able to, yep. uh, clearly, teach it and then think about yeah. you know it's it's application yeah i totally get that you know then if you're listening it sounds probably sounds like some weird voodoo mystical way of putting it together <laughs> but no that really works that really works yeah. and i think meditation is a, is a crucial element of preaching i think uh sometimes you've got to sit back and just think about that verse yeah and you know, spend some time really thinking about it um the, uh, I mean, for me, uh, it was, it was, uh, it's al- uh, it was almost the same for me. Uh, you know, you have a uh, topic you know you're going to talk about, and I, um, my, my, I'll, I'll usually have two nights. Uh, lately, the angels, I've been spending uh, like a whole week working on those messages, but usually it's yeah. two nights. First night is research. Second night is actually writing out the, the message. And yeah. the first night in research, I just try to put together, figure out what I'm going to do. How is it going to look? And then, right. uh, you know, but the thing that always attracts me in a study is what is, okay, I like to see what, what's that thing that I don't understand. You know, there's that thing yeah. in the verse. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. That's the thing I love to study. You know, Amen. I love to attack the thing I don't get. Uh, just dive hey, into that too. thing I don't, I don't understand until I finally understand it, and then I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You know, yep. I think that's the best part of study is you. Yep. Uh, and then sometimes, you know, there's a verse where you have, you've heard that verse a bazillion times in Grace Churches, but then you and and then you you kind of look at that verse and you think. Well, here's an aspect of that verse nobody ever talks about. Did you ever notice this, you know? Yes. Um, kind of thing. Uh, you know, like, uh, you know, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And, and the, the other day we were talking about, I said, well, did you ever notice? Even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. You ever notice for Christ's yeah. sake? You know, he doesn't just forgive you automatically. He forgives you for his son's sake. And then you have, you know, uh, something new and different to say about that verse that you've heard a bazillion times. You know, yeah. I love trying to do that. If, if at all possible, it's hard to do, you know. And, yeah, I think but, some of that, some of that comes from, you know, when we rightly divide and compare scripture or scripture, we'll do yeah. it from a dispensational standpoint, which is, which is good. But oftentimes some of those verses are just in a, in a kind of a, a different context Yeah, um, totally. that always isn't appreciated. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so I heard, uh, did I hear right? You're doing Philemon next. So there's some decisions we're making. <laughs> um, I, uh, I, um, yeah, I'll probably be doing Philemon next. Okay. And, um, or I might put it on hold because uh, I'm, I'm itching to, to go through Ephesians. Oh, uh, do Philemon so, first. Cause it won't take long. You could get, yeah, you could, you I, could I bust was thinking that about doing like a month. Messages. Um, yeah, just to, taking four messages and doing Philemon, and then picking picking up Ephesians. Because Ephesians but, is going to take you years, man, and you, and I'll never get around to hearing you talk about Philemon. <laughs> and I need you to talk about Philemon, uh, you know, because uh, that's uh, I'm on that's on my mind too. Because I'm I'm going up to to Brian's church, and and the whole conference is on Philemon. So oh, I was gonna yeah, I was gonna ask you. Okay, I yeah, remember so, something about Philemon coming uh, up. So yeah, what, uh, what are you teaching on? I, um, I I'm uh, I, I opened the conference. Uh, and I'm going to do an overview of the entire letter. Uh, the yeah. first message, uh, it, I'm supposed to just cover the first couple of verses, and I will. I'm going to cover all the people in those verses, the context. I'm going to talk Great. about where Philemon lived. Uh, everybody says Colossae. I don't think it's Colossae at all, and I defend from Scripture, hardcore. I think he's from Laodicea. I know everybody says Laodicea, yeah. but in the Greek, it's Laodicea, and I think it's really cool, and that's what I'm gonna, I like to say. And, um, <laughs> Uh, so hardcore, a hardcore defense of him being in Laodicea. A lot of people say you don't know what the decision was that Philemon made after he got that letter. I yeah. think you can know from Scripture exactly what Philemon did. And I think you can right. defend it from Scripture. And so I'm going to do that in the second message. Um, and, uh, That's great. Uh, I'm, I'm, if you don't mind, I, I, I'll just send you all the notes. You don't have to do all the... There was um, there was a year before before I ever started speaking, I, I was literally obsessed with Philemon. I was just a Philemon junkie. And the... <laughs> and the, 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 the and the thing that, ups, that got me hooked was just the fact that 
so many books were wrong, you know, and it was yeah. I was really on my own, figuring it out on my own, and um, you know, nobody. It seems to me nobody. Every time somebody gets to Philemon, they turn their brains off. They don't think about it because the letter's so short, yeah. And and it's uh, it's all application, and um, you know, there's not a lot to say. No, 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 no. You spend time with that letter. You spend as much time with that letter as you would something like Ephesians. That letter is yeah. going to open up to you. Uh, unbelievable amounts of spiritual yeah. insights and st- that you will never it's i mean it's it's worthy of your time in every way well and, verse six verse six is yeah. just packed yeah yeah uh you know the, the, by the acknowledging of every good yeah. thing which is in you in christ jesus right. like right every good thing <laughs> right 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 yeah. how long is how long is that going to take philemon to do that the rest of his life Right. Every good thing right. that's in him in Christ Jesus, right? You know, yep. and I knew that. Uh, I remember years. I mean, that to me is it, that to me is preaching. You know, because yep. because why you, you the, preaching is acknowledging all the spiritual blessings you've been given. It's acknowledging yep. identification, the beauty yep. of everything God's given you by His grace. And that, and Amen. what does that do? It it, it it becomes effectual in the saints. It energizes the saints when they learn about. All the blessings they have in Christ, you know. Amen. I love that verse. Um, yeah, that's that's really good. The um, the whole letter. I found a. I one time found a chart by Bollinger. Uh, it was like on page four hundred three of. Um, uh, what was it? The I th- um, um, the one about uh, the the thousand page book speech or. Figures of speech in the Bible. That's what I mean. Okay. And uh, he did a breakdown of the chart of Philemon. Uh, did a structural breakdown of Philemon, and it looks like this backward C. And I'm like, what on earth is going on with this chart? And I spent a day studying this chart, and it, and it, and, it, and I figured out exactly what he's doing. Bollinger was making the point that the letter is a perfect mirror. If you take the letter and you fold it in half, the first half is a perfect mirror to the, to the second half. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, uh-huh. wait a minute. And, and I, I absolutely studied it out, and it's absolutely true, and it just blew my mind. So yeah. you think about how, like, the, uh, the opening sentence of the letter has a proclamation of grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. And it ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then just as Paul lists in the beginning of his letter five names, yeah. so too he lists five names at the end of the letter. Right. Wow. Then you have the then you have Paul, you know, a third of the way into it. Paul has a, the request. He lifts up in prayer about Philemon and then two thirds right. of the way into it. Paul's prayer request for himself. Then he talks about yeah. how he led Onesimus to the Lord. And then on the flip side of that, he reminds Philemon how he also led him to the Lord. And then, wow. you know, when you get to the center, closer to the center, you have at the top, Paul explaining he had the authority as an apostle, but he chose to not exercise that authority, you know, to to just beseech him to receive Onesimus, you know, which yeah. meant that he was trusting that the grace was working in Philemon. And then on the other side of that center, he expresses confidence in Philemon that he would not only do what he asked, but more than he asked, because, you know, Paul was trusting that the grace of God was indeed working in him. Right. And then you have right in the middle, you have right in the middle what was what happened, and then you have the godly solution. You have Onesimus right in the middle of that letter, just as he is in the center of this story, you know. Um, yeah. It's amazing, amazing letter. Uh, that, well, what a that's great amazing. trailer you just gave for the conference. Yeah, I, that's a paragraph from uh, my first message. I just read to you. <laughs> 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 I, I totally, I totally gave away one paragraph of the conference. I love it. Um, I love it. Yeah, I, the uh, the other point too, and I already gave this away on Sunday, but I had uh, was working really hard on the second message. I write out all the messages, which is why I could have a bazillion articles on your website and not think. You I know. love it. Um, so, but the, and the the other thing about Philemon that's amazing to me, which is a phenomenal point to be made that you don't find anywhere else, is just that Paul was trusting grace to work. Yeah, he yep. really wanted to command Philemon. Yep. You know, he really wanted to come, but, but he chose not to. He was trusting. That grace was working in finally. He was going to trust yep. grace. There's a real sermon in that too. Just trusting yeah. grace to work in other people. This is why some pastors get a little, uh, even grace pastors get a little legalistic because they don't trust grace. You yep. know? Yep. Um, 
I, I, I love uh, fine, Don't get me started on Philemon, dude. But I'm going to say, <laughs> I, uh, it's my, it's, I could, I could listen. I could listen to you if you want to go. Oh, you want to teach? I'll listen. Dude, uh, I'll, I'm going to send you my notes if you don't mind. I want you. I no, want please you to do. Just, I, uh, it's one of my favorite topics. It's, it's literally I was obsessed about. It. And the reason, the reason Philemon took a year. Uh, was because I spent so much of that time reading about slavery in the Bible and in the Roman Empire and all that stuff. That that's a massive subject. You could read about yeah. that all your life and never reach the end of it. Um, I have finally had to put all that down and walk away. Uh, but finally, even in and of itself, man, if you spend an enormous amount of time in that letter, it really opens itself up to you. And everything everybody tells you is wrong because they. I, I don't know why they just they just switch their brains off. Uh, when they when they when they get around to Philemon, I think they're just exhausted by the time they get through all of Paul's epistles. So <laughs> I don't know. What, um, but um, I think I, I I legitimately think that when you when you see Onesimus in Colossians four, that is the answer. That's yeah. what happened. That that is that is proof that Philemon gave Onesimus back to Paul. And there's a lot of evidence if you look at the names in Philemon and the names in Colossians four. Yeah. There's no way those two letters could have been sent out at the same time. No way. Absolutely no way. So I think we do know the answer. And, I, um, and I'm going to make that case up in Brian's church. We'll see how well received that is. Well, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know? Um, so... Uh, yeah, it really, uh, it's, I, can't, I can't wait to see you dive into it. Of course, I could be wrong, and I'm open to anything you have to say about anything. I'll listen to any grace pastor talk about Philemon. Uh, but um, I'm, in particular, I, I personally would be very excited to hear anything you have to say about that. I would I would listen to every single message. I love, I love how you study and what you do and, and how you approach, tackle a subject. So to get to see your mind get wrapped around it would be a great curiosity to me. Um, but I, let me. I look forward to it. Let me let me move on here. Um, uh, we've got um, we got a all my all the great people are in the house here. We got Justin, uh, you beautiful man. He says uh, Brandon's a wonderful Bible teacher, precious saint. That's right. We got Cliff Mary uh, Cliff Matthews in the house. Uh, I guess Larry is here. Um, all the dear saints, Lori Howe, and I am so sorry for the buffering. Let me get through those comments. I'm so sorry. William Barons. Uh, you beautiful man, how are you? Church is in the house. Um, um, so sorry, guys. Now, let me see here. Cliff says, uh, um, uh, Cliff says, Dan, I think we have only seen the tip of Brandon's full reach. Yeah. If the Lord tarries, I can see him more and more relaxed in that pulpit. A very calm but quick mind, in my opinion. A bit like Josh. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. But I'll, if, if, if I'll Brandon, take you, goes, if, if, you, if you compare me to Brandon, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, but Brandon couldn't rock the bald head like Josh does. Nobody, <laughs> nobody has a more beautiful bald head in grace than 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 Josh Jalecki. <laughs> um, we got Sue Ellen here. How are you? It's great to see you. Great to see you. Um, <laughs> while they're waiting for the buffering. To, wait, waiting for us to fix the buffering church defines buffer he says buffer a person or thing that prevents incompatible or antagonistic people or things from coming into contact with or harming each other <laughs> that's hilarious dude that's really we were hilarious. talking about gog and magog right so. right yeah they they've heard they they uh the day after the panel i went off on gog and magog here and uh, i'm like dude and so they've already heard all that and it's no no loss to them uh that they might have missed some of that uh but I, I had to tell you dude i had to tell you um uh we got chuyita here um karen gray awesome to see you uh chris nelson's in the house my mad bad back brother out there in utah dude i love you man i hope you're great i really do um um uh lori from alabama is here i love you lori i hope you're great also you beautiful woman uh vicky bender's in the house it was good to be here in person with you all got to go to my zoom bible study now but i'll listen later oh vicky, vicky how you doing how you doing uh you weren't the only one you know you, do you did, did you know that josh Trelecki, you want to talk about spiritual leadership this guy gets up every morning has a bible study with his family <laughs> that is amazing. You legit, man. You have um you, you get up and with the kids, how many kids you got? Like two? Two, yep. Yeah, right, right. 
And um, uh, remind me again, what's your wife's name? Michelle. That's right, Michelle. Yeah. Uh, how's she doing? She's she's doing good. Thanks for asking. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I wish I could take credit for a lot of that stuff, but uh, she she is such a, a help to me oh, and uh, is, is a motivator to to do those kind of things so with you the guys, family. And do you guys so, homeschool? We do. Yep, okay. we do. I mean, you guys. Yeah, we've been busy the last couple of weeks, but uh, they're getting back into it now. They're doing a great job. You truly, des- you and Michelle both truly deserve an enormous amount of praise for the hard work you're putting into your kids. I don't think there's anything. I mean, being a great spiritual leader to your kids is the greatest gift you can give them. The fact that you guys are even doing all that, which is enormously hard work, an enormous amount of time. Dude, you have all yeah. my respect, really. Um, well, I appreciate it. We're very, we're very thankful that we're able to do it, you know. And it, it is hard work, but it's it's well worth it. It's yeah. so worth it. How, how old are your kids, if you don't mind my asking? Yeah, Abigail is 10 and Josiah is 8. <laughs> so. That's right. I forgot Abigail. I love Abigail. Uh, yeah. David's Abigail, right? Yep, yeah, yep. that's that's one of the best stories. Uh, uh, one of my favorite. I mean, you get to me some of the great women of the Old Testament: Esther, Ruth, Abigail. Abigail yep. ranks up there for me. Um, she was phenomenal. And then Josiah, but you were studying Josiah this morning, right? Uh, no, we were in Romans eight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Josiah, the boy king. Yeah, yeah. I love I love that story too. Here you get this boy king, and they're like, yeah. We lost the law, but we found it over in this room over here somewhere in the back of the church. And uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Maybe we should read the law. You know, maybe we should start yeah. obeying the law again. What do you th- yeah. What do you think? I think uh, even a kid could fig- could figure out what to do in that <laughs> scenario. Yeah. You know, <laughs> we're no wonder we're in all the trouble we're in. We're having been listening to God. <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, hey, let's crack open those books. What does the law say? <laughs> right. Um, Oh, that's awesome. You do that every single morning? Uh, mostly, yeah. Well, we're in our routine. Yeah, we, uh, we do uh, Monday through Friday. How do, you, how do you approach a Bible study with the family? Um, you know, I, I go, well, Michelle's such a help with, with that as well. We, uh, I, we've just been going through Romans. So I take a lot of stuff, obviously, that I've come to know and, you know, teach it to them. And, and you know, since she homeschools, she knows really well, you know, how they learn and how to pick things up and the questions asked. So she's a great help in that, you right. know, making sure that they're getting the understanding of a passage. And I've learned a lot in regards to, you know, uh, teaching children and right. uh, in that regard. But uh, we, we approach it, I approach it basically kind of the same way, just, you know, teach them what's there and right. uh, ask them questions and and michelle will uh when she sees they're not getting it you know uh I, sometimes i'm blind i'm like i don't even see that they're not getting it i'm just assuming they are you know <laughs> and right. uh she, and uh, so she's a great help in that way and um, i knew somebody um, who um uh did uh, homeschooling and he made the point to me that uh you know, you, you, he said, he said he had one kid, one of his kids just kept squirming and all this stuff. And, and he just thought he wasn't getting it. And then, and then his wife was like, yeah, ask him, ask him questions. And then he asked him, and he clearly, he clearly got everything. Got he was it. just bored because he was so far ahead of, of what he was <laughs> teaching, you know? And, yeah. uh, and he said, you know, you had, to, he, he realized early on that he had to cater the homeschooling to what works best for his kids, you know, and yeah. uh, for that, for that boy and well, for his other boy too, uh, you know, they, uh, they went, they, he's, they did a lot of schooling by going places, getting out of the house, going around yeah. stuff. Uh, uh, they felt that a lot of times that, you know, people, uh, parents would try to recreate the environment of what you'd get in a school. And they said that didn't, that never worked for the kids there. And it's not going to work. At a, you got to do what works best for that kid. Yeah. What, what yeah. he, what he responds to the most, most and uh, and cater to that and uh, he says he says half the time we did most of our schooling on in the car you know on our way to something cool for <laughs> yep. them to see you know yeah um, yep. I was I always remembered that number um, I I've, uh, 
I, I think, uh, but I just admire anybody. I, I don't know how anybody, I, I, I don't know, I, I personally in good conscience couldn't have my kids in a public school unless I knew it was a school like where Brian teaches, you know, and they're yeah. not, they're not, and I've got, you got somebody like Brian there and it's like, okay, or, or Greg Reeser, you know, and, yeah. I, reali- and I realize the school's okay, they're not going to. To totally try to indoctrinate you. Not every school is trying to indoctrinate you, but a lot of them are. But I don't. Yeah, I don't see are. how you how you couldn't uh, wouldn't want to homeschool them now and make that sacrifice because really, their souls, their minds, their everything depends on you doing that for them. You know. Yep. Um, yep. I really. I yeah, really like what you're doing. I remember, you know, being in public school and the things I heard, the things I saw. You know, and I wasn't going back to mom and dad and telling them, you know, what I saw and what I, we weren't at that point, you know, a Christian home really where they would have maybe addressed everything from a a Christian standpoint. Um, But, you know, now these days with, with, you know, cell phones and, you know, tablets and the internet, I mean, it's, they're so easy to see something that right you know they they just ought not see and so we're thankful mostly that we can just restrict them from a lot of that stuff and and you know some people say well, like well that you're not introducing them to the world and it's like well wait a minute if there's things that i shouldn't even be looking at things that i shouldn't be doing why <laughs> right. am i gonna allow my children to see that stuff you know and so it, it's not restricting at all it's it's doing what we are to do in you know romans 12 i mean this is uh, before they had public be schools to the world before they had public schools this is what we were doing you know yeah, and yeah. i'm almost to the point now where in some places i'm just like just defund the public schools altogether and just abolish the system and totally recreate something completely different i in some places i i just yeah. it's so bad and so awful I uh, you know there's no way you'd catch me having my kids in uh in uh public schools like what we're seeing out in california and new york and stuff no way yeah. man yeah um how long have uh, how how long have you uh, you and Michelle been married? Uh, thirteen years this past May. Thirteen years. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we got married right out of college, so we were what twenty two. Well, you, I, uh, I, I've always assumed you were still in your thirties. <laughs> I am thirty five. <laughs> good, 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 good. I'll take that. So I'm like, man, there's no way you got to be, you know, you, you just a young kid, dude. You. Uh, um, and um, the uh, and I wanted to ask you too, if you don't mind, the how are how are the saints at the church doing? Um, you know, how are they how are they dealing with everything that's going on? Do you have a lot of saints that are facing job loss? Do you have a lot of saints that are you know for because of mandates or whatever? Do you have um, saints that uh, you know they're up you know issues that you're having to deal with in that church? Uh, have you gotten all the saints to, to come back to your church? I mean, uh, generally, uh, how's how's it going there? Yeah, we're uh, we're only um, maybe I think at this point maybe only like four the two couples uh, that haven't returned. Okay, uh, but that we're in contact with, and you know, we we understand why and and all those kind of things, and sure, uh, still still obviously good relationships, still consider themselves to be a part of the church and and all that, and you know, we respect their decision, and um, and as far as the rest of the church goes, you know, I, I've just been so thankful for it, it's been a, a time for us to see the the effectualness of the word of God working in them. And, uh, it's been working great in, in all the folks, you know, there's for the most part that, you know, not everyone has the same mind about everything regarding the mandates and, you know, the vaccine and, and, and the virus and all those kind of things. Right. But there's a greater mind that they have in, and that is, you know, how they are to view and love and respect one another and the decisions that they're making. Right. Um, and so uh, that's been great. We've had, you know, we've had folks that have taken the vaccine and uh, we've uh, we've had folks that that don't want to. And uh, all of that has been has been fine. There's there's a couple uh, that I know uh, nurses that uh, one, uh, you know, quit his job. The other one, you know, it's it's really close that she might have to quit. Um, but there's. 
like I said, there's just a mutual respect and love and care and right. tenderheartedness towards one another in, in everything that's going on and that the emphasis, and I think this is what we've tried to do as a church, the emphasis is on eternal things. And that's, that's the most important thing. And when right. you have that, then it's, you know, not that you're not going about this life, but you're not entangled in these things. And, right. and, um, and so, yeah, everything as far as that goes has been, been good. Um, you know, I think with some folks, there's a bitterness in regards to our political leaders, but, you know, the word of God addresses that as well. And exactly. so oftentimes it's just a, a reminder, refresher yep. uh, of that. And uh, so I'm, I've been so thankful to the Lord and, and the power of his word and, right. and the faith of the saints in the word right. to have a communion that we have that otherwise we could be a very in a very different situation of, right. of factions and divided. Right. Very timely and relevant. You went through Titus 3, I'd say. Especially yeah. the first, uh, first few verses there. That's awesome. Yeah, and, it almost seems like I planned that, but I didn't. But it worked <laughs> out really well. Uh, and and the, uh, it would seem that now is, it, it is more important than ever that saints, uh, re, you know, I've, I know a lot of people are passionate on both sides, but yet you still need to um, adhere to Scripture and what, and what Scripture says about how we're to treat one another, you know, yeah. speaking yep. truth and love, speech all way with grace, seasoned with salt, yep. you know, all that stuff. You can never forget to do that regardless of the topic. And there is supposed, there should be a great love between the saints, even on those, on those particular topics, you know, yep. uh, regardless of, of which side you're on. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, I definitely feel passionately one way, but I, at the same time, that does not give me an excuse or a liberty to bite the head off of somebody who disagrees either. We've got, we've yep. got to be able to be mindful of, of what it means to deal with each other in grace, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think the, I think the difficult thing is, you know, when you look at the, the political parties and you look at the policies and their ideologies and things like that, there is one that uh, seems to be more line up with principles of God's word. The other, the other side, because sometimes um, people appreciate because of more of the conduct that they present. Right. Um, and so there's this it's kind of back and forth in regards to that. And, you know, one of the things that I've come to appreciate is that we as the church need to recognize that we are our own entity um that that the church is the church and we're not to be christian nationalists we're christians and our christianity impacts how we view our nation and how we view the things that are going around but and, and the reason why i think that's so important is because as i told my folks that just this past sunday you know you, we don't want to suffer for something that is of the attached to the wisdom of the world yep. you know if, if we're if we want to suffer let's just suffer for the lord and and of course that's going to be you know a, a pro-life stance yep. you know but that i don't need a political party to align with in order to stand for those things i stand right. for those things because it's god's word and, and the exactly. principles of god's word exactly um let me, uh, Justin uh, Cox here says, I think we all ought to uh, go through the Gospels to initially show us all of our shortcomings and then come in, into the knowledge of the truth in uh, Christ via Paul's epistles. I like that thought. I love the Gospels. You're definitely going to uh, feel like you're not going to measure up uh, in terms of righteousness and all of the instructions you get from God <laughs> in yeah. the Gospels, that's for sure. Um, did you ever read uh, a Josh Baker's book on understanding the Gospels? I, I have it on my shelf, but I've never read it. I, I love that. That's one of my favorites uh, because he takes the Gospels and he doesn't go through it book by book. He goes through it in chronological order of events. Okay. And and so literally, so you get to like maybe you know the, it'll get to his uh, the the beginning, his birth, you know, in in chronological order. And so like say for example the Lord's baptism, he'll have all the references in the different gospels to the Lord's baptism. So I'd read all the different references and then read the short bit of exegesis on his baptism and then move on to the next event. 
And it's I'll it, have to I'll have to read that because I've been questioning a couple things uh, yeah. regarding that. Oh, it's, uh, it's so check that out. I don't agree with everything he said, but it's a legitimately exhilarating experience because yeah. you know you go from his birth all the way to his death, and then all the way to his ascension. You know, yeah. it's amazing. Um, and then um um oh, there was something else I was going to ask you, and I can't remember what it was. Oh, the um. And uh, the, after we're done with um, Angels, uh, the next series um, we've been we've been try- we've been preparing, and I say we because I've I'm got people helping, and I'm actually talking a lot to the pastors. Uh, but uh, we're going to do the uh, end of the world in chronological order. We're basically going to do, you know, tribulation uh, kingdom in chronological order, uh, like the way Baker did the Gospels. That's what we're doing next. Nice. Uh, no, that's a that's a massive study. It's it's really hard. It's really <laughs> you have you ever have any brilliant thoughts? Anything great? I'd love you. You are welcome to send me everything you have because I. Uh, it's really really hard. I mean, I know the rapture is going to happen. What happens after that? Well, I don't know. I suspect some horses. You know, <laughs> we might, we might well, have some horses there. I don't know. I'm, I, we're still trying to compile the order of everything in Revelation, and uh, it's hard. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll share this with you right now. You, you had mentioned earlier in regards to the blog, David Winston Bush. Yeah. He was, uh, he was a, a co-pastor up there in, uh, I think, Washington somewhere. And okay. um, with a guy named Corey Richardson. And um, oh, David man. Winston Bush has written some books. Um, some people, you know, will say they're too hard to understand or something like that. Uh, I've enjoyed them. You know, there's there's things that I've I've gained, but he wrote two books. One called uh, the Appointed, and the other one called the Assyrian, and that's what those books are on. It takes the the Jewish feast days and lays out um, that in their fulfillment in the future. Yeah. And uh, the Assyrian goes along and kind of adds to that. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if you've ever came across those books, but those might be ones that. Might be of some help I, to you. I wonder if I have because uh, the name, the David Winston Bush name, sounds familiar, and but I can't, I don't know what or why or how. So I wonder it might, it may be it. Um, I was yeah. talking to Hal la, uh, to last week, two weeks ago, about the Assyrian. I, I haven't fully settled my mind on it, but I have my doubts about the Assyrian being um, the Antichrist. It's just. It's way too different than what the Antichrist does. There's a, there was a lot of just you just start getting into the details, and my mind is just like I just don't see the connections here. But I'm open. Yeah. I'm open to anything anybody has to say. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not going to be dogmatic about that. Right. Uh, but I, I have my I have my questions and my doubts uh, on that. Do you have any opinions one way or another? Um, well, I have my present understanding, but is is uh, you know malleable and malleable to you know further <laughs> study and, yeah. and sharpening. So yeah, um, y- you know I there's when you look at the Assyrian, you know you, you talk about the Assyrian that was in Egypt as well. I forget that passage, and so there seems to be this kind of thread that goes uh, goes around when I when I look at. Um, the Bab- the Syrian Babylonian captivity. Yeah, I see a lot of parallels to what was going on there, to what is going to take place um, in regards to that seventieth week of Daniel. Um, and it, my understanding is this: this this man of sin, the son of perdition, he he starts there in Assyria and things with Daniel what he says he kind of leaves his people his people don't really agree with him and um, and then he comes to Jerusalem and all those things and then he, he heads to uh, Babylon and so there's right. this Assyrian Babylon uh, Babylonian connection again and um, so I, I do view him as an Assyrian now if you want to get into further details regarding the Syrian and exactly where he came from and all those, you know, I, I don't yep. necessarily know, but, yep, um, yep, yep. Yep, uh, it's still fresh on <laughs> fresh. Room. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, the thing with Hezekiah and everything like that, that's, yep. that's all very interesting issues, yes. you know, to where, you know, Sennacherib doesn't come against, uh, Jerusalem. There's a book out there. I always wanted to buy it, but it was like 200 bucks. Uh, it was called Sennacherib at the gates of Jerusalem. Wow, and uh, it historically addresses, you know, uh, kind of him and what he was doing, but why 
why he never was able to come. And of course, we know the answer to that. But, right. Oh, yeah. Um, there's definitely a lot of parallels uh, to Sennacherib, uh, to the man of sin, in how he spoke and his haughtiness. And, yes. Um, spoiler alert. Yeah. They get wiped Bush out. Says, Bush says uh, Sennacherib is the, is, is the man of sin, resurrected. Okay. okay. Which is interesting because in Revelation you have uh, the 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 man of sin there. He um, he has a, a deadly wound and a wound of a sword. Well, Sennacherib when he goes back to Nineveh, his sons kill him with a sword. Okay. So uh, you know he throws out those parallels and makes that. And I, I you know when I first read, I was like, oh yeah, there it is, you know, right there. And, and now I kind of I backpedal it on a little bit. I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. But uh, but there's definitely I see you know a, a type and and shadow of Sennacherib to the, to the man of sin. Interesting. Uh, yeah. um, Cliff says, uh, love the way that chart shows God's hidden checkmate. Yeah, totally. The chart showing the checkmate on Satan. Uh, you know, really the. Uh, the mystery is one of the greatest plot twists in the history of the Bible, in the history of the entire world. I don't know of anything more hilariously epic in terms of a twist than this, uh, the Lord, then God the Father defeating, God the Father defeating Satan. Um, I just lost Josh, the poor man. I don't know of a more hilarious way of God the Father uh, defeating uh, one of his enemies in a more brilliant way than to just simply keep a secret. <laughs> um, uh, let me see here. Uh, um, uh, sentence diagramming. I know several bald pastors who know how to do that. <laughs> I imagine uh, sentence diagramming, brother, is uh, something that Randy White probably loves to do also. So you're in good, good company. Um, did I lose him again? I think I did. Hey, Josh, you there? Oh, here we go. Try it again. You there? Yeah. All right. Um, Cliff Matthews says, a sentence diagramming. I know several pastors uh, who know how to do that. <laughs> several bald <laughs> pastors who know how to do that. Sorry. Uh, I imagine Randy White is probably a big fan of sentence diagramming. Uh, gotcha. So you're in good company with a good bald pastor. Um... Dan says, I would be afraid to clap at David O's church also. <laughs> I saw that. Uh, uh, it became a big deal at the conference, I heard. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, dude, it was hilarious, man. The uh, uh, David Osteen's going to be up at Brian's church, and uh, he told uh, David Reed, he's like, I hear Joel's a hugger. I don't, I don't know if I can hug. I'm, I'm not sure I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not much of a hugger, man. I don't, I don't think I can do this. And, I, and yesterday I, I said, hey, David Osteen, you listening? Pucker up, big guy. It's coming. <laughs> I love it. And I told Brian, I said, "All right, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna invade anyone's personal space with, you know, an unwanted hug. You got nothing to worry about. I'm not gonna go grabbing people at his church. It's not, you know, except maybe David Osteen. <laughs> yeah. Um, the uh, um, uh, Chuyita says, I prefer uh, Eric, asking Eric uh, from Right Divider Chin. Oh, yeah, Eric Newman. Yep, yep, yep. I see a lot of his videos. Uh, Persis says, Joel, did you hear Charlie McQuillan's take on uh, Philemon yet? Charlie McQuillan's got a special take on Philemon. I don't know. I do not know this. What is this? This I must hear. This I must I know. I must hear it, too. I must, I must hear this. Uh, if, uh, if I don't get an answer in the live chat, will you check with Charlie what his special take is on Philemon and get back to me? Because I this I got to know. Um, uh, Dan says, uh, whatever threats are present, I still fear. Uh, but now there is no threats uh, for us from God. Amen. Amen. Um, Let me see here. Uh, what's the, hey, Dan, what's the question? Uh, was there a question that you wanted us to, what's an SE question? Uh, is that about Sue Ellen? I don't, uh, let me, do the, uh, Dan, Dan put did the, ask a question earlier about Sunship. Oh, but Sunship now, notification. I think it got deleted or something from the, when the buffering. Oh, uh, okay. I don't, uh, look, uh, when it comes to Sunship, I, um, 
you know, I've talked about it before. I don't have any, Brian's got a whole series on sonship edification. Uh, I, I don't really have anything new to say about it than what I've said in the past. Um, I do like Keith Blades' uh, stuff. Um, uh, I don't think he really goes into sonship edification all that much in that enjoy the Bible quarterly. Uh, I mean, I, Brian said there was some elements of it toward the end, but I don't, uh, I don't know. You have any, you have any take on it? I don't, Josh? Well, uh, I have lots of thoughts. I don't know how much you want to get into it. Um, <laughs> I really, I, I don't, I don't care whatever you want to do, brother. It's up to you. I, uh, I, you know, when I first got into the ministry, um, I, I was introduced to Mark Newbold and appreciated oh, him yeah. and his ministry. And he, um, he's in like South Carolina know, or something, isn't he? Yeah. And yeah. I, uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh, North Carolina. There you go. Yep. I know yeah. the name. I've not, I know not seen him. Yep. Yeah, and so he was. He was kind of, um, you know, Keith uh, talked to him a lot about you know sonship and those kind of things, and um, and so you know I would talk with Mark quite frequently. You know that st- stopped back in uh, I think it was about 2013, maybe. <laughs> Um, so okay. we went for about two years, you know, talking about stuff and, you know, I appreciate it. There's things in regards to, you know, depending who you're talking to about sonship edification that I once held to that, you know, I would, I would, uh, um, discuss differently, um, and, and not agree with, you know, there's a lot of phases and stages and, to me, it was just a way to understand kind of this concept of edification a little bit further than what we normally get, you know, Romans through Galatians, Foundation, Ephesians through uh, uh, Colossians, you know, kind of the superstructure Richard Jordan yeah. taught. Yeah. Um, which I learned that that was, that whole issue, it comes from uh, Ruckman, is it Ruckman maybe? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But don't. Uh, that that whole idea supposedly was I don't know. But anyways, um, and so you know I don't you know I don't talk about phase and stage. But anytime I hear sonship, someone asks me about sonship edification because I have that I had that relationship with Mark, and again very thankful for it. Yeah. You know the way that I understand sonship is that we've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry out the Father. Yeah. So therefore. We're not under the law, we're under grace, and part of that grace is we have this relationship as sons and daughters. And uh, edification, just being the issue of the doctrine, that's to build you up. And I do I do believe that we have a doctrinal order to Paul's epistles totally. that grows and develops and matures in regards to the progressive revelation given to him. Totally. We find that in his epistles. Yep. And that as we go through that, we're growing and developing in, in the understanding of our doctrine. And, um, you know, as far as it relates to, you know, I believe we're all heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Okay. Um, I believe that that takes place the moment that uh, someone believes the gospel, that we receive an inheritance and I believe that part of that inheritance will get um, you'll get a reward based upon the judgment seat of Christ, uh, which does have the issue of your growth and maturity attached to it, right. uh, not just the issue of believing the gospel. So right. that's try to that's what I kind of summarize when it, you know when I look at sonship edification um, and and talking about it generally. I, uh, um, I, I, we had some, I did once have Ron Knight on here without really realizing, um, uh, and, and I, and he was the sweetest man ever, uh, and we had a couple of, uh, other, uh, Sunship guys that were in the live chat in the early days, yeah. and, um, you know, the, I remember one time, uh, not too long ago, I did a message on the, uh, sufferings of this present time. <laughs> yeah. And the response I got was just, I mean, it was email after email after email after email. And I constantly, you know, and I, I hadn't even responded to them, you know, and, and the yeah. 
I mean, they just overwhelm you with all of this stuff, and it's just like, uh, you know, it, to me, I don't have a problem with somebody having a differing opinion on the uh, sufferings of this present time. That wouldn't wouldn't bother me. Uh, but, yeah. to, but to be so aggressive and dogmatic is just majoring on the minors, if you ask me. Um, yeah. And it's uh, you're str- you're getting to the point of striving really, where you just won't yeah. let it go. You just keep doggedly fighting about this thing, and you, and you won't let it go. I mean, I um, and it was just weird. It's just and it's not. I don't I don't feel like that. Like th- for example, that particular issue would not be one that should merit any kind of of a division between brothers. But when right. you're striving about it, you know, and you're just dogmatic and you won't stop fighting, and you just feel like you know I've just pulled the rug out from underneath your whole theological. You, you know, you're you're majoring on the minors there. That's not. This isn't the greatest, right. the biggest issue ever. You know, I mean, we all need to be focused on not just the gospel but identification. You know, right division. That kind of stuff. I mean, there's there's yeah. liberty, I think, to have differing opinions. But I mean, if you can't handle well, a differing opinion, you know, and you're striving, I got I got to walk away. You know. Yeah. That's no, that was I my experience agree. with them. You know? I think some of that comes from uh, you know I'm not I'm not as actually sure obviously who was responding to you, but in in some folks, you know, in regards to sonship edification, there's this this kind of this idea of you know. In, in view of the terminology stages and phases, you know, this idea of mastering um, a form of doctrine that the Apostle Paul, you know, God has the Apostle Paul right. Um, and, you know, that can be a huge hang up. And, and, and part of that, then when you come to master it, well, now there's no other there's no more learning that you really have in connection with it. Right, right. And, um, and that's why I think so many people respond that way, because now if, if you got it, if you got it wrong, now you know there's this issue of well i'm the one that's right and so right there's none of that that charity that can be extended totally agree. and you know there's things that as i've been studying the mind of the lord and and ephesians one that has actually helped me to understand better um the issue of suffering with him that we might be also glorified together right and so you know if someone puts me in that box right. um sure I'm, there's things that i teach and and preach and i'm convinced and persuaded on but um, i'm also not gonna you know be put in a box by someone that if if i'm seeing something or someone else comes along and shows me something of a better understanding of a text right you know that's right. it that that is god's word right then i'm gonna go with that because it's god's word right i i totally agree you know um, nope. So I, um, but that would, <laughs> that's about the extent of what, I am not at all an expert of uh, the in and outs of the Sunship group, and uh, I know Brian is, I, if something comes up, I'll just ask Brian. <laughs> I don't know, uh, there were those papers that came out a long time ago, uh, I think Ron Knight and then Brian wrote a paper, and then I think that Michael, Michael, Michael Jones something, something. I uh, wrote a response to that, and uh, I mean, it was just, uh, you know, on the subject of suffering and reigning, I mean, they, they, they were so angry at Brian for disagreeing with him, they outright called him a, uh, a heretic, and I'm just like, yeah. it's not, that, that there is no, there's nothing cool about that at all. I, their response to Brian, no. I mean, to, to Brian on that was um, really, I mean, it, at the very least, it just it screamed to me as being kind of uh, young, very, uh, you know, um, kind of immature you just you know you're you're so in the passion of the heat of that debate that you're just going to extremes in order to win an argument that's not that's not that's not worth getting into a big old fight about to begin with you know yeah um yeah. um you know and i would be open to other opinions about suffering and reigning uh but it's just you just can't have a constructive conversation with them at all right. uh, or a civil one um so uh, you know it's a, it's a, it's a weird thing, but I imagine uh, bet your money if they stick in the word, they they keep their minds in the word, they stay focused on scripture, they keep studying together, they'll eventually probably move past this 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 kind of behavior, I, and that's not there's nothing unusual about that either. I mean there were uh, people that were extremely militant and um, and aggressive in the years and years ago about being King James only. 
and now they realize that militancy was not exactly, you know, <laughs> the way God yeah. would have us behave. And so, I, you know, you ha- I, 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 I would give those uh, brothers um, a lot of room for growth, too. They may very well grow out of this kind of behavior, and you may be able to have a civil conversation someday, and that would be awesome, and maybe some fellowship. I mean, so uh, uh, both sides uh, spending years uh, studying Scripture and trying to apply it to our lives will hopefully eventually be able to create enough love between us we could bridge that gap and not have to be so um ha- have this confrontational um yeah. uh, way of conversing with each other you know uh, i completely agree i, I love those brothers. I it, yeah and, and the, the irony is is that you know you know if my understanding is correct in, in some of what they you know what different people believe about you know, sonship or whatever you want to call the joint air issue, um, is that the, you know, the issue of reigning with him, you know, the contingency based upon that is the issue of charity and, and love and, right. and serving others. Right. And yet when it comes in the, some of these conversations is completely absent yeah. avoid and it yeah. kind of defeats their, their whole thinking behind it. And right. so, um, yeah, and like you said, uh, you know, joint, these are important issues, but the, they're not they're not the major issues. And no, um, a lot of times, what I find, a lot of people are talking past each other because yeah. they're they're arguing about a verse, and their point might be true. It just might not be that verse that right. that's teaching their point. Right. Um, and so you're arguing about two points that are true. I'm not saying this is always the case, but totally. a lot of times that two points are true. It's just that the verse is only describing one of those points. Totally. And so if, if we just kind of take a step back and realize we're brothers and sisters of Christ and we're trying to understand this better. And, um, you know, like you said, have that, that meekness between each other, we'll get a lot further. Right. Um, and, and if we're humble enough right. to have someone else be right and that we might be wrong, right. um, we might actually benefit from yeah, it. Yeah, so. I, I don't, between those three things, the joint heir, suffering and reigning, uh, the sufferings of this present time, those doctrines, uh, somebody who has a different opinion uh, than me on that, is it's not a make or break issue there at all, you know, mm-hmm. and, and uh, there's no reason you can't have a civil discussion, and I feel like uh, those are people that uh, I would be able to have fellowship with if we agreed on everything else, you know, on especially the gospel and identification, right. I love, but I'd... Um, and uh, certainly, right, the basics of right division. Uh, and so, um, uh, you, you know, I've, there's an open door there down the road <laughs> for yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, and I wouldn't yeah. steer anybody away from sonship simply because, uh, you know, I think I'm right and they're wrong about those particular issues because I think those are minor issues. I think, um, as, and I think they're fascinating issues that are worth studying in your own personal time yeah. and, and worth anybody uh, considering both sides and making um, being fully persuaded in their own mind about whatever uh, but um, uh, you know I just wouldn't want anybody to get involved in that group just because of the the aggressive way that they behave until they yeah. uh, stop behaving that way I uh, you know uh, um, but that's as much as I'll say I'll probably get yeah. a bunch of emails about that and but I don't I don't I, I say all of that in love I really do yeah, well, um, I hope not that uh, you didn't say anything wrong or yeah, anything like I, that. I, I, and, and again, I think with certain points too, if we find if we find where we agree, you know, right. the particular sometimes okay, the sufferings of this present time, maybe that's where the discussion is. But if we would all, you know, recognize that the the major issue of that expression is sufferings, yeah. you know, um, and so sometimes it's it's finding the agreement. Um, and you know, being able to build uh, off of that agreement instead I mean, of exactly you're completely wrong. And I, I think, yeah. I mean, I have, a, I have fellowship with a lot of people uh, uh, in, about which we differ on on quite a few things. You know, there's a yep. you know pre rather um, soul sleep. Uh, there's uh, you know, I di- there are differ with folks on the reconciliation debate. Uh, flat Earth, uh, different with some folks on that. Uh, <laughs> there's uh, and uh, we have folks here that are not, uh, you know, King James only advocates. Uh, uh, there's there's a lot of things about which I I feel like I would still fellowship with these dear saints, show them love despite those differences, and I feel like these other topics are right in the kind of that same realm of category there. 
uh, regardless of the uh, what you think about joint heirs and suffering and reigning, you're still going to serve Christ. You're still going to do whatever you can, you know, to live a life of Amen. gratitude, you know, and uh, we'll let the Lord settle it all at the, at the Bema seat. But, the, you know, we're all running that race and it's important yeah. to us all. Uh, yep. So how how do we how do we uh, uh, figure out how to run faster and do better? Yeah. Um, yep. uh, I'm sorry. So that's um yeah um, yeah. Uh, thank you for those thoughts on that. Uh, William Barons yeah. uh, says uh, unity. Don't upset the cart. That's right. Um, um, let me see here. Uh, same here. Uh, see if there's any comments here that uh, would be good. Oh, somebody said something about Rochelle. Wait, wait, wait. Where's she at? Where's it at? Um, oh, Sarah McKenzie's in the house. She was at um, she was at Osteen's church. I heard. How awesome was that? I'll bet you had a great time. She was going to come up to our conference, but then uh, some of the family got sick, so we missed her. Oh, so she says. So she says. Yeah, well, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, I love me some Sharon McKenty, and I'm. Um, Oh, uh, Persis says Rochelle uh, told uh, told her about this uh, podcast twice. Um, well, if you see if you see Ra Rochelle in person, you give her a great big hug and a kiss, and make sure you tell her that uh, uh, we told uh, we 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 called Charlie McQuillan scared. Man, make sure he hears that. Uh, Persis. <laughs> Uh, yeah, eventually, I'll probably get take. him on. Yeah, I, I cut back on the um, on the guests and stuff when I had both Hal and Fred here with me. Uh, they uh, they they get great enjoyment being here, and um, um, so I, I will get back. We're going to have um, Richard Church next week. I'm going to get uh, Sam Sam Gerhardt back on, and then we'll get some new people uh, to come in and join us. Um, let me see here. Um, I think I saw. Um, a question here. Uh, Cliff says, Joel, please, I meant to ask, could you write just one line about the best books in searchable riches? I get so lost among all those books, brother. Maybe make a text file. You are here. There is some, um, there is on the searchable riches drive, there is some, um, uh, like I love that you made that available. You know, I have to admit, I was a little, I was a little jealous when you had me on last time. And then I was looking at your podcast and we were listening to your interview with David and Stephanie Reed and you gave them a drive. And I was like, where was my drive? <laughs> I didn't, I didn't get you drive. can download and it now. I yeah. Now, now you're sharing that. Yeah. And I downloaded it the yeah. other day. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, as far as the, my favorites, um, there's there's too many to list. Uh, you know, you get. Uh, I, I would my first, if you've not read Baker's um, Understanding the Gospels, I love that book. I li I and I am really kind of itching to read it. Uh, uh, read it again. Uh, I would start there. William Kelly and his commentaries. I love I love William Kelly. That man that man can write. That man can write really well. Um, Doug Dodd, um, uh, saint here. His some of his articles I really loved. Uh, there's a saint. Um, oh, I love the the the, um, the one I was asking you about, Josh. The last time I had you on, uh, Stanford. Um, yeah, no, um, Nancy Paulson. Uh, I've got all her articles on the search oh, boards. Gotcha. Uh, oh yes, okay. And uh, some of Dwayne Galantine too. Um, yeah. Um, Dude, I you know there's so many here. There's all the Bollinger stuff. How can you not love that? Uh, um, I mean uh, Gabeline, Gabeline, Arno Gabeline is um was a German right divider who had a ministry. He could he spoke fluent Hebrew, and his ministry was to the Jews and to bring them into into understanding that Christ was the Messiah, and then he'd bring them into grace. He had an amazing ministry years ago wow. in New York. And uh, uh, so Gabeline, he's of course he was Acts two, but Gabeline um, has some of the best Old Testament commentaries. His his Old Testament stuff I never miss. If I'm ever reading some but something in the Old Testament, I always read Gabeline. So it depends on what you're in the mood to, mood to do. Um, William R. Newell, his commentary on Roman is top top notch, uh, except for the Roman six section. Um, <laughs> that, and apparently, Brian says uh, he got it right in the first version and took so much heat for it. He actually rewrote. Really? Yeah, yeah. 
I would have. I, <laughs> uh, identification is a, a hill I would die on. You, I would not. Oh, yeah. I touch a lot of stuff. But I wouldn't. You ain't you, I'm not going to give up. You know, <laughs> spiritual baptism in Romans six. Are you kidding me? No, thank you. Yeah. Uh, in any event, um, and there's all kinds of Brian Ross stuff there. I, you know, it's um, it's it's hard. It's hard to um, nail it down. But we've got. Um, Karen says, I have all of David Bush's books, Deep Thinker. Oh, my kind of guy. My kind of guy. Um, <laughs> Cliff says, who else besides me needs navigating Joel's Searchable Ridge's archive? Yep, good luck <laughs> with that, brother. Uh, Sharon McKinty says, question, in light of those uh, passages about reject, mark, and avoid, etc., it took me a year to embrace right division. Thankfully, they didn't give up on me. If someone is respectful, why uh, do we have to give up talking uh, to them after two times? Um, I'll let you touch that. She's talking about why do you have to uh, reject them after the first and second admonition? Um, well, what, what, when I dealt with it, one of the things that I saw in connection with it was uh, the, the leaven issue. There's two issues of leaven that I see in the scriptures, the, the leaven of uh, sinful behavior and the leaven of sinful doctrine. I'll put it that way. Uh, in the gospel accounts, you have the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, their doctrine that the disciples need to be aware of. And then the leaven in First Corinthians 5 there of the man who had his father's wife. Um, and that, that leaven, of course, is not only the issue of in contrast to unleavened, but it can leaveneth the whole lump. And therefore, you go from the issue of being meek and gentle and charitable and thinking about the edification of that that man to having to switch gears because of the persistence in a behavior or in a erroneous doctrine to how that's going to affect the the assembly the group at large and so th that's my you know kind of simple take on why you would want to reject is because of the the negative ungodly influence that that could be yeah. on the the rest of the body love that uh, yeah, I mean, the first and second out, you're talking about a crazy person causing all kinds of drama. <laughs> yeah. You know, really wreaking havoc in your church. Yeah. Uh, you know, you want a good example? Uh, you know, uh, remember News Unit and all the drama? We, were, we weren't at first and second admonition. We were uh, in 13th, 14th, 15th admonition. <laughs> right. By yeah. the time we finally had to pull the plug and, uh, and block them. Um, well, see, that's even that's even the gracious thing. I mean, this isn't. I mean, there's an argument being made that you know this the, the podcast not necessarily a church. Um, you know, so you could have cut the cord right away. But right. you know, in a church, there's that that recognition of you know they're coming in and and you are you know you're shepherding them, but they're going away. You know, they're going away from right. you know what you stand as a church, the pillar of ground of the truth. Right. In Titus chapter three. Um, you know, in verse nine, the the issue of the void, foolish questions, genealogies, contentions, and strivings. Yep. My understanding is those four things are all about the law, right? For they are unprofitable and vain. So, right. the the issue of those things in connection with the law is the the specific heretic here. But uh, I dealt with it you know a little bit more broadly but right. you know you have that issue being brought up in uh, first timothy right away where he talks about they they have swerved and have turned aside on the vain jangling right desire to be teachers of the law understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm right uh, they're not using it lawfully and so right uh, that that kind of can put it into context in regards to a specific doctrine when someone's coming in especially obviously grace churches because we hold the truth and we're under grace when they come along and start imposing those things of the law um you can begin to see that the heresy and the the, the death and the detriment that that could be to the whole body um, all right, we've got Marshall and Crystal Coleman are in the house, brother. Hey, Marshall and Coleman. Crystal Coleman, how are you? Crystal, Crystal, I love you. I'm so glad you're doing better. We were at, we yeah, were man. honestly praying for you daily, daily. Um, yeah. Marshall, you beautiful man. You give that wife a great big hug and a kiss for me. Well, yeah, I love you guys. I hope you're doing great. I really do. It is phenomenal having you here. I'm truly, truly blessed to have you guys with us. And uh, uh, so glad Crystal's better. 
uh, that beautiful woman. Uh, you got a lot of work to do, Crystal. So you got to, you got to, you got to get better. You got to get up and get going here because uh, we got we got some ministry to do before we go home and be with the Lord. Um, so it's awesome. I love you guys dearly. I hope you're great. Um, um, Sharon says, "I feel like people abuse those verses." Am I wrong? Yeah, there are people in the world that will use those verses as a as an excuse to be um, rude and obnoxious toward others. Uh, that's not how we've been called to to, to operate. Um, but it's just a means of um, protecting the flock. You've got to protect the flock, not only from uh, bad doctrine, but also from sin in the church. You cannot. You, you you cannot cover up or excuse sin, you know, egregious sin, you know, uh, that would, uh, on a par with, um, you know, a kid sleeping with his uh, stepmother or whatever. Uh, that no. cannot be excused. That is behavior that is beyond the pale that needs to be addressed because if it's excused and people accept it, then you're going to be looking at all kinds of uh, abuse of uh, uh, um, fornicating issues. Uh, from other believers thinking, oh, so, well, this guy's doing it. Well, why can't I do it? Um, this It's really important that what Josh said about Levin, I, you know, that's a, that is, you hit the nail on the head there. I loved it. Um, but yeah, um, let me see here. Um, yeah, yeah, read Baker's book, Cliff. That would be awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see here. Uh, what else do we have? Um, Bush's book, The Assyrian, is the one Josh was discussing. Yep, yep. I'm sure that was good. I, I am willing to consider uh, what uh, what he said about the Assyrian. Absolutely. Um, let me see. What else do we have here? Uh, I'll send you a couple things in connection with that. To, uh, great. That might whet the appetite. I'd be open Some of the to charts it. you have in there are really at least interesting to look at. I'd be open to it, absolutely. Dan says, yeah. yep, Joel, anything that takes our mind off of Christ is the devil. Hey, we got Charlotte Allman in the house. In UK, our public schools are private schools and are rather expensive. You may get a scholarship if you are lucky, eh? Um, that's, uh, uh, yeah. It's, um, and uh, the, uh, um, yeah, it's, yeah, great point. Great point. Uh, back in the olden days, back when we had those uh, 13 colonies here, yeah, you had schools being, children were being taught in the churches, in the homes of people. It was a community thing. Um, and um, yeah, you can't help but kind of kind of look back and think, well, they were, they had, they, they, and those kids in those, in those conditions got a better education. They, I mean, they legitimately came out far brighter than, uh, uh, what uh, kids today are are being taught? Um, uh, Cliff Matthews says, "Chris, yes, uh, uh, what I was after is not really a guide to all the books, but just a one-liner on all the top-tier books." <laughs> there are so many top-tier books in that in that thing. I, I I couldn't even give you one line with all the top-tier books. They're all great. I have personal favorites, but um, it's hard. It's hard. I'll steer you in the direction of understanding the Gospels and uh, do that. Bob Picard says it's uh, pretty straightforward. A believer has complete sonship upon belief of the Gospel. I totally agree. Uh, growth Amen. in doctrine and good works are fruits from our position in Christ. Right, right. Amen. Totally agree. Um, and those, we, we already have those seats in the heavenlies. What else we got here? Um, I know your ears got to be killing you by now. But I don't really care. Uh, let's see. Karen says. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> this, uh, is, this is great. Um, Karen says. Uh, okay. So we've got a bunch of. Amen, Bob. Taking God's word, looking at the circumstances of life, talking to God about how to apply his word to those circumstances, and then decide based on that renewed mind what your decisions are to be. Yep. I totally agree. Totally agree. I'm. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Karen uh, cites Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is quick and powerful And sharper than any two-edged sword Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit And of the joints and marrows And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart um, I don't know, you got anything to say about that verse? <laughs> it's a I mean I'd say the Bible is alive reads you as you yeah. read it you know 
And, yeah, uh, the, 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 the one part that I always, I don't have a uh, good understanding about is the joints and the marrow issue. Oh, I know, um, I know. Why does he do, why does he do that? Right. Yeah, he throws in, I, I know there's some Psalms in there that he starts talking about the word of God and, and yeah. what it does to his joints and marrow. I just have never studied it out, but you know, the joints obviously, you know, kind of connect things. Um, yep. And marrow, you know, is the, the is kind of the life of the, uh, right. You know, the, the blood there and the bones and stuff like that. But, uh, right. yeah, it's kind of throws in the physical when it's all spiritual there. And you're like, what, what is he talking about? Yeah. But I mean, it, it's not like it just divides between, uh, flesh and bone, soul and flesh. It goes into the details of the body, you know, the joints yep. and the marrow. Yep. And then, but I always, you know, it was interesting to me that you've got this, you know, you've got these two, do you have the thoughts and the intents of the heart, you know? Yeah. You have a thinking heart here, a thought that, that operates with intent. Um, and there's a, he makes a distinction between thoughts and intent. Doesn't, it isn't an intention a thought that you, you've had? So that's weird. Right. That's, that's always been, thoughts and intents of the heart is always, was always weird to me. I never really thought about yeah. joints and marrows. Uh, I'll bet you that would be an interesting study uh, to try to consider yeah. the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, I always when I when I hear that verse, I always think of Psalm forty-two, uh, verse five: "Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance." And he kind of echoes that right. uh, a couple other times, but you know, here you have David. Um, I think this is David. Uh, yeah, and he's he's talking to himself. Right. Uh, he echoes it in verse eleven. Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted? Disquieted within me. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise Him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? And he's talking to himself, his soul. He said, "Why? Why are you so disquieted?" And hope thou in God. You know. And right. you have you know the the word of God. Obviously, is the the revealer of God and how that is, uh, you know, the help to our soul and to produce that, that joy and the health. And it's, you know, the hope thou in God is the thing that distinguishes between, you know, David looking at his soul and the effects going on with his soul right? and the hoping in God can change all that, you know? Right, um, right. So. I had a member of the church was telling me uh, not too long ago, she's, she's going through Psalms and she's like, you know, David sure is kind of whiny at times. <laughs> it's just like, you know, when he, he's always whining about his enemies, and it's not like he ever says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. No, David's like, hey, God, wipe them out for me, will you? Get rid of them. <laughs> well, that's why, you know, so many of these the, sim, the situations that David was in, yeah. that little flock is going to be in out there in the future. Yeah. And, you know, the, the the whole issue is their enemies are on their back. And, you know, that's why he'll call to dis destroy them and all those kind of things, because that's that's the time it is on on God's timeline. Yep. Uh, Gerard, we got Gerard in the house, our dear brother from the Netherlands. Grace to y'all and, right. and uh, peace from God, our father. Greetings. And then he speaks in tongues. Uh, it's awesome having you here, dude. I love you, man. I hope you're doing great. Uh, Dan says, yep, Joel, because the, uh, the, just because the gay is forgiven does not give them the right to continue. Yeah, I don't know how to, uh, I've actually talked to the pastors about this. So let's say you have a, a couple that's uh, living an alternate lifestyle that comes into your church. Well, clearly you want them to get saved, first and foremost. Amen. You know, and clearly they're going to need some time to get the word in them, you know. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, it's um, Hal and Fred was just like, leave them alone, play it by ear, you know, kind of thing. And yeah. uh, before you would ever get around to addressing that. Um, and um, in the UK, you know, you're, it'll, it may very well be illegal that you could even address that if they were to walk into the church. I would break, I mean, if the UK were to pass those conversion therapy laws, I would totally commit civil disobedience if I had a couple like that come into the church. But. Um, you know, Fred's attitude was always get them saved first and foremost, 
and then let the word work in them you know and that takes time you got to let the let you know give them that direction and you know they get direction pretty quickly if the first book they study is romans especially that first chapter uh but you know I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Have you ever encountered, Josh, uh, that kind of a situation with your church? Not a, not a permanent situation. I have uh, had temporarily, you know, for a visit right. uh, via, uh, they were family members of a member of our church uh, who were uh, homosexuals. And, you know, my mind immediately just went to share the gospel, but right. I didn't. Right. You know, bring up one. I didn't bring up their particular sin as the sin that needs to be forgiven, but there's many more that need to be as well. And right. so, um, but I went up to them, had a conversation with them, and talked to them as anyone else. And right. um, you yep. know, exactly. hopefully, hopefully there was some seeds planted or whatever. And right. if not, then that's you know the Lord is their judge. And right. Uh, but that's how you know that's how we approach is you know we would share the gospel with them just as we would anyone else. Exactly. And, you know, Love I think that. our, our culture, you know, kind of twists that on believers in the sense of, you know, because it was such a, a norm in culture and society and, and now it's not. And, you know, upheld by, you know, I guess the laws of the land for some, quite some time that, you know, now it being taken away, you know, we view it as such a, uh, a heinous thing right but it, it's a sin like any other sin uh in in the respect of sin itself and so we just need to address it with the gospel and right uh, and and love them and and that doesn't mean you know we wouldn't tell them that they're wrong and give them advice when that time came but right. again it, the, the gospel is the most important thing because right. that's what's going to change their heart when i was working at disney i was surrounded by them and i had um you know, and I had, you know, and then I, I fell away, came back to the Lord, and uh, so then the new, and I, I um, and then I was starting to wrap my head around Paul's epistles and scriptures and grace and stuff, and one of the questions for me was about love, because if I showed them love, would they confuse that with uh, um, some sort of acceptance of the way they're living? And I finally, right. and I, you know, um, you know, you have... I think for me, I think if as a as a believer, if they if it is well known, you you are clearly a believer, and everybody knows you're a believer now, and you're showing love. There's got to be that question in their mind, you know, why? Yeah. Why are you doing this? Because I I know I don't think I'm supposed to be loved by you people. Why are you loving me? Well, because God loves you. Um, so right. I don't know. I um I was I, I was always wrestling with that question, and I finally decided. Look, Bible says to love, love, do it anyway. Let them find out you're a believer. Let them be curious about it. and uh, Because they're not going to be curious about uh, the cross or accepting Christ as, as their Savior if you're not loving to them. You've got to yeah. love everybody. And if they're going to misinterpret that, well, then that's a, you know, that is... Um, that's worth the price to the price of love. If they're going to misinterpret, that's one thing. But you can't you can't afford to not love anybody for any reason. You always do that. You've got to be a model of charity. Um, so I, um, you got to love. You have no choice. Don't even worry about how anybody might interpret that. You know. Right. Um, yeah, that I was think, hard. I think too. One of the things to consider is discerning where they're at with it all. You right. know. I right. mean. There's a lot of Christians, uh, you know, probably even a lot of grace believers who, you know, maybe are coming out of a uh, lifestyle of drugs or, you know, pornography or, you know, whatever that is that you may or may not even know about. Um, but, you know, the, the, I was, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because First Corinthians 5, again, the man who had his father's wife, at the end of that chapter, he says, I wrote unto you in verse nine, I wrote unto you in an epistle, not to company with fornicators, right. yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world right. or with the covetous or extortioners or with the idolaters for the, then must you needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother. Right. And, but the issue here in first Corinthians 15 is they were boasting about it. You know, they weren't, they weren't contrite in understanding, you know, that this is sin. They shouldn't do this. I don't want to do right. it. I, I have this addiction. I'm struggling with it. 
you know, help me kind of thing. They're boasting about this. They're not mourning about it. Um, they're not changing their mind about it. Right. And that's a different attitude of the sin that I think kind of has Paul go the direction that he goes here in regards to don't keep company with that kind of person. Right. Um, but, you know, with someone who might be in, uh, you know, a fornicator, um, but they are looking to um, not to, to not let that sin reign in their mortal body. Right. Uh, then you're, you're not going to, you're not going to not keep company with them. You would want to keep more company with them because they have that willingness and that right. hard attitude to, right. you know, change. And, and you want to be the one alongside of them with that love, with the, the doctrines of grace, with love it, with all the, the instruction to renew their mind. You're the one that should be there. And so I think discerning where they're at with that sin is um, important to know so that you can take the totally. appropriate, you know, totally. here it is again, this guy, this guy's boasting about it. That's the leaven. Well, now the whole church thinks they can do it. And that's right. not what you want either. Right. And so totally identifying the effect it's having. Yeah. I love those thoughts. Uh, uh, underneath that bald head of yours, brother, is a beautiful mind. I love that mind of yours. <laughs> well, hopefully it's the mind of Christ. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> it, you've got plenty to say about it. So <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, uh, Dan says, uh, Josh, is your channel uh, live now on YouTube? Yeah, I saw that comment. Yeah, I think that uh, uh, Don, our media guy at church, he's, he's putting them up right now. So All right. I'm sure he'll be back uh, soon. Uh, Karen said, look at the poem, The Destruction of Sennacherib by Lord Byron. Um I got to copy and paste that. I don't. I'm not familiar with it, and I would totally read that poem. Uh, I've heard it, but I, I don't recall it. Uh, I'm almost sure. Um, I'm familiar with Lord Byron, but, but I'm sorry, Lord Byron. I, I don't think I've read that poem. Uh, Dan said, uh, "Thank you, Josh, for uploading Sunday messages." Persis says, "Joel, what bone in his body? I'd love to get up to see them. I'm recovering at my brother's house." I'll happily uh, text Ro uh, saying hi from you. Um, uh, great. I don't know what... I've, I've forgotten the context that I got put in my body. <laughs> uh, I totally forgot the context, but yeah, yeah. Um, love those saints. They're dear people to us. I, uh, I think uh, Rochelle's got... Uh, she's got connections with some of the saints here. Um, so uh, it's uh, it's a great honor to have her, and uh, I love Charlie McQuillan jokes. Um, I love those a little more than uh, 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 Josh Strzelecki jokes. <laughs> um, oh, I, I don't I don't know if I have any jokes. Uh, well, you got you got to do I'll, the tie clips, tie clip jokes. Um, yeah, yeah, oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Yeah, tie clips, definitely. And you look good in those tie clips. I, I always notice the tie clip every, ever since the last podcast. Every, and I, I'm like, dude, Sterlecki looks good with that tie clip. That was a good choice, man. That was a good choice. So, I don't know. So I don't at the know conference the, yep. on Sunday, uh, you know, you didn't see Brandon, but Brandon and I were wearing the same exact shirt. <laughs> and then we're sitting by each other, kind of laughing at it. And uh, he sees me, I'm playing with my tie clip. And, he, and we had the same tie clip as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of these days he'll catch up with you when it comes to fashion. Uh, Karen says, so true, alternative lifestyle is not listed in the list of things God hates. Pride is listed twice. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and you talk about, you know, in terms of degrees of sin, uh, some would argue that there aren't degrees of sin. I, I don't know how you wouldn't say there aren't when you have a list of things that God hates and at the top of that list is pride and vanity, you know? Right. Um, yep. So, I, you know, I mean, clearly he has listed that pride and vanity above all. And uh, um, and that's a that's a truly great point. And you think of it, you think of, um, you know, faults in people and the way what God has to say about pride and vanity, you know, a lot of people have a lot more sin uh, um, than others. Uh, but that's that's a great point. Yeah. And I am. Um, yeah, he says it will be more tolerable for this, for Sodom and Gomorrah than for the the other cities that were rejecting him when all he's on, you yeah. know, when he was on the earth. And I always look at that and I think, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the Lord, you know, he's loving and he's, he's, he's a lot of these things, but he is also 
I mean, he's, there's, there is you, uh, fear when, in a lot of the stuff he says during the Gospels. There, yeah. I mean, he's clear, yeah. he's, he talks more about condemnation and damnation than anybody else. And he's out yeah. there, uh, and, it's, and it's a fearful thing listening to him talk about it. Um, yeah. I'm sure he talked about it in a perfectly wonderful tone, but still it's fearful when you think about eternal consequences to things like that. Yeah. Um, I, uh, that's, a, that's a great point, man. Uh, Gerard says, And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your, of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Right? Amen. Exactly. Um, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, Dan says. Now they're just riffing off of each other with Bible verses. Um, <laughs> the, um, uh, Justin says, uh, right, they were a puffed imp in their sin. Big difference. That's right. Uh, Persis says, I pulled it out of my memory. I usually uh, doing uh, miss that mark, at least by by much. Uh, I'll look for it later and uh, get back to you. Sorry if I erred. You didn't, you, it's, uh, no, uh, you're, you're great. Um, the, um, do you, let me ask you, Josh, do you view, uh, real quick, do you view the things that are going on right now with like passports, you know, you can't buy or sell unless you have uh, uh, have fulfilled all of these mandates and you have a passport to show for it. Do you feel that this is somehow a precursor to the mark after we're gone in the rapture or no? Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, I can't determine how much of a precursor they are, but I, th I think that what's been going on is uh, eerily similar to what will go on right and so um in that sense i think it's a a, a precursor we're getting a, a little taste of what will it will be like out there in the future right. right um but at the same time you know we could be 100 years off still you know yeah i totally agree god knows Do you, and, but you know, yeah I, it's, I, it's definitely coming that way i mean the thing that gets me is that it's global you know, yeah. and the thing that yeah. it's not like this is like a uh, only in our country are we having issues with, uh, you know, these ideas of uh, passports in order to literally be able to buy or sell. But this is global, honestly, and uh, makes you wonder, makes you wonder. Um, Gerard, yeah, yeah, it's not it's not necessarily nations against each other or anything like that. It's, right. Yeah, it's the issue of uh, a unified uh kind of stance in regards to the, the virus and the vaccine and the approach to address it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's I think, the eerie feeling is the collaboration of the nations in regards to this issue. And I can't help but wonder if the, you know, if this is, I mean, at the very least, would this not be a conditioning of the mentality of the, of the people of the world yep. uh, to, be, to make them in a, of a mindset to accept something like the mark of the beast once it comes along yep. after we're gone? Um, no. I, I, you know, I, that's so weird. I never in my life ever dreamed we would see something that I would say, you know what? I think this is a, a legitimate trend of something uh, yeah. that's going to lead to the mark of the beast after we're gone. I never thought, I never thought I'd see see the day. But you're absolutely yeah. right. There are things that can happen that may prolong the inevitable uh, return of the Lord. I think a war would be one of them. Um, I yeah. think it's very possible uh, war could set things back for a while. Uh, but you never know. You never know. Uh, Gerard quotes um, Colossians 1.14. We're almost done. Uh, Colossians 1.14. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Oh, I already read that. No, I didn't read this. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Translated into the kingdom of his dear son, for our conversation is in heaven. Didn't you talk in that message about how his kingdom is righteousness? That was a point yeah. I really loved. You know, it's... His kingdom is righteousness itself. Yeah. yeah. I yeah, love Romans that point. 14, uh, when I was going through Romans 14, that stuck out to me. Yeah. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but yeah. righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Right, right. Yep. It is, there, his, his character is in his kingdom, you know, and his yep. kingdom is a reflection of himself. And Amen. his kingdom is righteousness. I, I, yeah, I thought that point was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. I really, yeah. uh, I, you did, uh, that was, that too was wonderful. Uh, now let's see here. Persis, the thoughts and the intents of the heart make me feel very safe. Right. I think the heart is a phenomenal study. Uh, there is, uh, is, you know, it is so closely tied to the brain, but yeah. you, you also have a thinking heart. 
Uh, you have a heart that is, a uh, course, of corrupt, as we know from Jeremiah. But uh, at the same time, it's a, after you get saved, it's a heart that has the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ now. There is a love of God shed abroad in our hearts. There is a heart that has to be established through the study of his word. There's, it's a fascinating thing, the, the human heart. Um, and uh, I, that's a, uh, that's a, you, you really would um, be edified by having a study on that kind of thing because it's complicated. Um, Dan yeah. says our mind has to know before the heart understands. Totally agree. Um, I think the heart is a react uh, reacts to the mind. So I think uh, I think generally, if you look at you know when you had like for example the fall before uh, the flood, uh, it, he highlights the heart. You know the evil imaginations right. of the heart continually. It was the men were guided by their hearts ab yeah. uh, above their minds and the evil imaginations of their hearts. Uh, he didn't even talk about the mind back there in Genesis six. You know. So I yeah. think it's possible the man is a man is guided by his heart before he's saved, but after he's saved, you have the renewal of the mind to which the heart reacts to the wisdom uh, and the uh, and the spiritual understanding that you find in God's word, which which then gives you that emotional balance and that emotional life God always intended for you to have. But you have to have the words of Christ dwelling in you richly in order to be able to have that the vitality of that e rich emotional. Christian life. Um, don't Amen. get me started. You, you like? Did you like that? Okay, Josh. Did you agree? I, I yes, very much. Yeah. Someone I, I remember hearing someone once teach. They said uh, the way to the heart is through the mind. Yes. And, uh, yeah, that's the way in which you know set our affection on things above. But we got to know what those things are, and then we can set our affection there. See, and this is the th that was another thing I loved about your message was the fact that you know you, when you speak. You're very careful to get the details right in 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 the little things in your sentences. Like you, I, I I understand, you know, uh, I'm very much the same way. Because when you when you say something, you want to make sure you get the doctrine right in the details, which is easier said than done. It, it, it's it's hard to do, but you're very careful about the details when when you talk about anything. And I love that attention to detail you put into every thought when you're behind the pulpit. It's noticeable. It's noticeable. I don't know if, I, I suspect that maybe things other pa pastors would notice, but you're very careful with the details and getting everything right. Um, and I love that about you. I love, I love that you do that. Um, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I try. I want to make sure that uh, anything that I'm teaching, anything that I'm saying about the Word of God is is can be found to be true because it's coming from the words of God. Right. Yeah. Um, now, let me see here. Uh, Chris, so... Uh, um, uh, the mind is a, synon a, a synonym with the heart. Uh, very much, they're very much connected, that's for sure. Uh, Justin says, Amen. I love that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I see in that context, uh, God is, is our righteousness, the God of peace and God of joy and consolation, preaching to the choir. Yeah, love that, Justin. Well done. I love that dearly. That's great. Hey, uh, um, Josh, uh, if somebody, how does somebody get saved? Can you give us the gospel? Yeah. If you need any help, uh, let me know. Someone gets saved today. First, they <laughs> need to understand they need to be saved because of the wages of their sin. Their sin debt Amen. is uh, to the height of heaven. And it only took, it can only take one who came from heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay the wages of those sins. And that's what Christ did. He commended his love toward us. And yet while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us so that um, we could be, delivered from our offenses and that's what uh, the apostle paul teaches the gospel is is that uh, christ was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification and so when we believe that christ's death was not just a death in which was common to man but that he died to uh, pay the wages of our sin debt that that death is way more meaningful than any other Amen. man dying um and that he rose again from the dead victorious over sin and death having completely propitiated the wrath of god against us satisfied god's justice against us um and the way in which we receive that free gift of the forgiveness of all of our sins is by faith and faith alone we don't work for it and we don't work to receive it and when god sees our faith trusting in what 
the, his son did, the faith of Jesus Christ. Amen. He responds by justifying us, declaring us righteous because of the merit of his son and not our own. I so believe today and be saved. Love it. Love it. Justin Cox uh, uh, said, well, when you read Ephesians 1, 12 to 13, do you see the same sequence? Um, that's, a, that's a great question. I love those verses. You know, uh, we should be to the praise of his glory. Who first trusted in Christ, in whom ye also trusted. So, you, 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 you know, it's, you are, you are on, one, on the one hand trusting in what he accomplished for you at Calvary. But on the other hand, you're also trusting in him personally, who he is. You know, Amen. and the fact that he accomplished what he did at Calvary for you. And uh, and you're and you're trusting in uh, there's some trust in God, the father also, I think, because you tr God, the, you, you're trusting that God, the father will give you that free gift of eternal life because of what his son, because of your faith and what his son accomplished for you. So, yeah, I, I see it all as part of the of the same process. I would usually. Um, I, you know, uh, what, what Josh said I, it was, it was just the perfect approach. I loved everything he said. Um, all right, so uh, how about a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, how grateful we are for Josh Strelecki today, the beautiful man. I, I, how, I totally lift him up, Michelle, Josiah, Abigail, that entire family, how we love them dearly. And I, I, I just want nothing but grace for them and that entire church, Father. In every way, and I pray for uh, Josh to continue to keep uh, uh, gaining all of this wonderful spiritual insight and growth and uh, w wisdom and understanding such that he can be an effective model of charity and teaching and uh, um, uh, preaching out of your word. I pray, Father, that you will use him mightily. And, uh, and I pray for all the saints at the uh, Twin Cities Grace Fellowship, how much... Uh, uh, I lift all of them up, uh, all of the saints that we talked about uh, today, all the saints in the live chat, the subscribers to the channel, love them all dearly. And I totally lift all of them up in all their needs. Um, <laughs> I, got a, I got a page here full of, of names. Uh, but, um, you know, since we had Marshall and Crystal on, I totally lift the two of them up, especially Crystal, how I love those two. Um, and I think also of... Um, uh, Neil Maranatha, you know, I'll just mention him real quick. My dear brother out there in Wales, I love him. I, I lift him up. Everybody else on the, on my list here, all of these, gosh, what, 100, 150 names I've got here. I lift all of them up, all every last one of them and everybody that we have here with us. And I pray, Father, that in all these circumstances, you know, we will all continue to embrace the sufficiency of your grace, the empowerment of your grace, that we will... Uh, be strong in the grace that is in your in your son um, and that while the world out there may be getting darker and darker we will all be bright shining lights of your grace and your gospel that we will go out and we will all do what needs to be done in order to effectively reach out to the lost and the dying so they may come to a saving faith in your son before it might be too late and I, 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 Father, I honestly pray that all of us, we will absolutely run that race as hard as we can, knowing that uh, your son is at hand and that we will, uh, that everything we say and do will be to the honor and glory of your son, our Savior. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Supplyofgrace.com. Check it out. Joel, we, uh, we're going to be cranking out some articles, that's for sure. And uh, you guys, uh, don't forget, check out Twin Cities uh, Grace Fellowship. Check out Josh Strelecki's messages. The man is legit. He is the real deal. Check him out. Don't miss Josh Strelecki. And uh, keep, um, keep him in your prayers. I love you guys. We'll be back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. with a uh, Bible study with Pastor Fred. And then I'll be back here tomorrow night to do another angel message. I might be calling it Touched by an Angel. <laughs> yeah i i, I, really, I just might uh so uh come on back i love you guys take good care bye